Hashim the Dream, and on federal election day, we vote in Premier Mark Brantley and the entire CCM party in seats 9, 10, and 11 for United St. Kitts and Nevis. Ha! Yeah, 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 yeah. They are top 10, bro. We voted for CCM again. CCM go keep it up, keep it up, up, up. Just keep it up, 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 up. Keep it up, CCM. the dream and on federal election day we vote in premier mark brantley and the entire ccm party in seats 9 10 and 11 for united st kitts and nevis ha! Yeah, 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 yeah. They are top 10 more. we voted for ccm again ccm go keep it up keep it up 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 just keep it up 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 keep it up ccm keep up the momentum keep the dream and on federal election day we vote in premier mark brantley and the entire ccm party in seats 9 10 and 11 for united st kitts and nevis ha! Yeah, 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 yeah. they are top 10 more. we voted for ccm again ccm go keep it up keep it up 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 just keep it up 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 keep it up ccm keep up the momentum keep it up
CCM concerned citizen movement. You mess in the Brandley, Alexis Jeffers, Eric Evelyn. You don't know. Jeff. CCM going with it. Big up Alexis Jeffers and Eric Evelyn. Yeah. The world sent kids the whole Navy, so don't know Romain Bragg represent. This is Original Coffee representing for the CCM party. Mark Brantley, a year only place, you know. Big up Alexis Jeffers and Eric Evelyn. <laughs>
So keep it up, up, up. Just keep it up, up, up. Keep it up, CCM. Keep up the momentum. I'm gonna remove my mask because I'm the only one standing here. I'm gonna remove the mask. I'm the only one standing here. Oh yeah, me. Hey, hey, let's go. Keep it up, CCM. Keep up the momentum. Keep it up, up. I want you to share the life. Share the life. Let's start a party now. Hold on, oh. Uh huh. Hey, wherever you are, good night to you. Good night, good night, good night. The big blue machine in the building tonight again. Uh huh. We voted, we voted. Keep it up, pop, pop. Say, keep it up, pop, pop, pop. Keep it up, keep up the momentum. Keep it up, pop, pop. Just keep it up. Where my 
CCM family them there. CCM family. Team family them there. Hey, let me see you wave your arms. June 5th, jump on the busy, jump on your busy. Right now, I want you to talk somebody, talk a friend. I want you to share the life. Let's get some energy tonight. Let's get some energy tonight. Here we go. Everybody know. Jump on let this War, no more violence in the Federation of Sinkings and Nevis. Let's go. Come on, talk somebody, talk somebody, share the life. Yeah, man, go and plant some fruit trees, some vegetable trees. We're going to start a party tonight. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. Share the life tonight. 
you remember to share the life. Let's go. Uh-huh. 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 Where my gentle and people up there? Number 10! Where the number 10 passive them there? Let's go! I have a mission. I have a mission to reach my destination. No I, no I, nobody. Hold me back, hold me back. Hey, positive energy, no negativity, man. I stand up right and nobody gonna stop me. So I, no I, nobody. Hold me back, hold me back. So we have a good power. No can work to achieve our goals in life. We have a good power. Coming out to vote an election day. Tell them, don't know me back. Don't know me back. Don't know me. Don't know me back. Push Wherever you're looking at this live from tonight, tonight, wherever you're looking from, wherever you're viewing it from, I should say, I, I want to say good night to you. I want to encourage you to share it. Tag somebody. Of course, it's a concerned citizens movement, virtual meeting. Cheer it, cheer it, cheer it, cheer it, cheer it, cheer it. If you're voting, I want you to show me your voting finger. I want you to put one finger up in the comment box tonight. Come on, show me your finger. Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. Let's go! 
We're getting ready for the 5th of June! For the 5th of June! Let go the whip! Let go the whip! Let go the whip! This, this, this is horse racing. One! Get ready! Two! Get ready! One! Show me a voting finger! Show me a voting finger! No! Let go the whip! Let go! Let go the whip! Come on! Let go the whip! 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 Let go! Let go the whip! That's a yeah! This is horse race. It's Friday night. I'm having a party here ready? tonight. Two, get ready. One, two, one, two, three, go. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Let go the whip. 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 Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna play the next house race song now. Listen to that one, you know! Uh-huh. When you go out on the 5th of June to vote, you're walking with your neighbor. You're walking with every member of the family in your house. You're not going alone. You're making sure everybody voting, right? We're going by grandma and grandpa, we're picking them up. Do 
Don't fear if we not roll a load. encourage you to share the life we're gonna get started in a few just a few we're gonna get started with the concerned citizens movement virtual public meeting for tonight yeah so wherever you are share the life tag somebody make we have a party just before
we're ready to party. We go make them jump, jump. Share the life, I encourage you to share it. We go make them wine. We go make them free us. It's the place of a canal. We stop at so much you call this carnival. I want you to yeah. find your way. Everybody on the dead. If you're coming down from the wrong dead. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. When we read your feet in the song. See me jumping on. It's so bad. It's a Since 2007, Premier Mark Brantley has been on the campaign trail, election after election, local and federal. On Friday, June 5th, he will face one of the most crucial elections in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis. But before you head to the polls, tune to Von Radio this coming Sunday when he gives an exclusive interview with veteran journalist and broadcaster Everett Webber Herbert of Von Radio. This will be live on Vaughn at 3.30 in the afternoon. Remember, this Sunday, you can't miss this one-on-one. -on -one. Since 2007, Premier Mark Brantley has been on the campaign trail, election after election, local and federal. On Friday, June 5th, he will face one of the most crucial elections in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis. But before you head to the polls, tune to Von Radio this coming Sunday when he gives an exclusive interview with veteran journalist and broadcaster Everett Webber Herbert of Von Radio. This will be live on Von at 3.30 in the afternoon. Remember, this Sunday, you can't miss this one-on-one. -on -one. Since 2007, Premier Mark Brantley has been on the campaign trail, election after election, local and federal. On Friday, June 5th, he will face one of the most crucial elections in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis. But before you head to the polls, tune to Von Radio this coming Sunday when he gives an exclusive interview with veteran journalist and broadcaster Everett Webber Herbert of Von Radio. This will be live on Vaughn at 3.30 in the afternoon. Remember, this Sunday, you can't miss this one-on-one. -on -one.
My name is Mark Brantley. I'm the leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement Party, and I will be contesting uh, the constituency of number nine, where I am currently the incumbent, and I'm asking the people of number nine to stick with me and to keep the momentum. In 2015, the Concerned Citizens Movement took a decision to join with two political parties on St. Kitts to form Team Unity. I think since then, the relationship between St. Kitts and Nevis is the best that it has ever been in our history. And that is why we're asking our people to keep the momentum. My name is the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, and I am your candidate for the upcoming federal elections for the constituency of Nevis 11. John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, once said, if your actions inspire someone to dream more, to learn more, to do more and become more, then you're a leader. I have been the leader of the constituency of St. James for the past seven years. I now want to be the leader of the constituency of Nevis 11, St. Thomas's and St. James. If we are to transform the lives of the people of Nevis 11, then I need to be your leader. I want to be your leader because I am here to ensure that we keep the momentum just as we have done in St. James. My name is the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. We're here at one of those accomplishments in that we would have uh, removed what we consider to be an eyesore or an unsafe building, uh, which was the old police station built way back in 1970 thereabout. It was uninhabitable and I believe that we would have made the right decision in coming up with what we feel is the appropriate structure to replace that old building. This is a building that is over 15,000 square feet and it should, when it's all said and done, house police officers, both male and female, fire officers, both male and female. It will have administrative quarters and also other amenities that will support the entire team. I am proud of this accomplishment because it has been in the making for many, many years. And I do believe without a representative like myself who would have put this on the forefront and taken it to all my cabinet members, it would not have been accomplished. And that is what you must do as a representative, and that is to bring good to the people so that their lives can be transformed and their lives and livelihood could be made better. And that is why we're keeping the momentum. My name is Eric Evelyn. I am, I am the area representative for St. George Gingerland in the Nevis Island administration. I am responsible for culture, youth, sports, community development, telecommunications, and information. And in my short two years in the Nevis Island administration, I have accomplished a lot in all of the various departments that I'm responsible for. And it's because of the fact that I've accomplished so much why I believe I should be given that nod to go into the federal election. And so, I will be a candidate in the upcoming federal elections for Nevis 10. And so, I am looking forward to being in the federal cabinet to continue to keep the momentum.
Hashim Najim and on federal election day we vote in Premier Mark Brantley and the entire CCM party in seats 9, 10 and 11 for United St. Kitts and Nevis. Ha! There is a trend in the NRP when it comes to the people of Nevis 9, especially the people of St. John's Parish. First, it was Roberto Hector calling the development of Brownhill as a waste. Brownhill Road. As we drive through the village, we see every house with walls higher than Fort Knox, with driveways paved so much much as 50 feet with complementing matching garages and iron railed gates all paid for from the public purse if this wasn't bad enough here comes kelvin daly a few nights ago he refers to the people of bath village as house negroes and termites we plans for bath. all those house negroes who are coming to tell people in bath these are house Negroes who live in Bath. Every election, you see them coming out like termites. You see them coming out like termites. This is a dark day on the campaign trail. Let's listen again. Are there plans for Bath? All those house Negroes who are coming to tell people in Bath. These are house Negroes who live in Bath. Every election, you see them coming out like termites. You see them coming out like termites. But Premier Mark Brantley, and a candidate for Nevis 9, thinks differently. This is Mark Brantley. I say to my opponent in this election, the people of Bath are not house Negroes. The people of Nevis are not termites. We are all divisions, and we all have our pride and our dignity. On election day, reject the insults. Vote for a candidate who cares. A candidate who understands you. A candidate who gives you hope for a brighter future. Vote Mark Brantley. Vote The Hammer. Vote The Concerned Citizens Movement. Which one? Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And welcome to our Friday night virtual campaign meeting. The big blue CCM machine. Well, we are not on the road, but we are coming to your homes virtually via the Eastern Caribbean's powerhouse, Van Radio, via our CCM YouTube channel and via our CCM page on Facebook. We want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening to your CCM party. We want you to rally with us for elections 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, as is our custom in the Concerned Citizens Movement, we want to start our meeting by asking the Lord's guidance and presence here tonight. So let us bow our heads and close our eyes for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, come down and intercede with us this evening. Let your presence be felt here with us. 
that everything that we do this evening would be you, to your name, honor, and glory. We want you to be with all of the people of Nevis and to be with the CCM party. Guide our three candidates. Give them wisdom and understanding and compassion, dear Lord. Be with those who are on their way here even now. Give them traveling mercies. And be with all of the people on the island of Nevis. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I think tonight is going to be another wonderful night. We had a good virtual meeting last night. And the whole of Nevis is now talking about that virtual meeting. And guess what? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the tempo in Nevis is high. All of a sudden, the momentum, we are feeling it because the people of Nevis are gravitating to the message of the concerned citizens movement. And what we have been saying is to strengthen the mandate of the concerned citizens movement. We have two seats currently in the Federal Assembly. We are saying we want three seats come next Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Friday. And guess what happened? Next week, Friday, is the day of reckoning. It's election day. So we have one more week to go. So we want you to hold strain with us. Keep that momentum with us. We have the momentum. We need to keep on going strong, ladies and gentlemen. So tonight, we're going to have a few speakers come up to address you. And of course, we will have our candidates who we are putting forward for this election. And as I have said before, and I will say tonight and I will continue to say that the choice in this election is a simple choice. The candidates being put forward by the Concerned Citizens Movement are the best candidates in the race. They are the best persons to represent us, the people of Nevis, at the federal level. In 11, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, there is no contest there. 11, you have sent a man to St. Kitts since 2000, and you have nothing to show for his representation. You know the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. Everybody in Nevis knows him. He's known by his works. They say, by your works you shall be known. And his work is evident all around the island of Nevis. And when you measure him up against his opponent, there's no comparison. One has been in elective politics since 2000. Alexis came in in 2007. Seven years after. And he has done a lot more. Give him that opportunity to go to the federal parliament and to the federal government to give you that good representation. So that's 11. And there's no comparison there. You come down to 10. And there is no comparison there once again. The NRP candidate running in 10. Not even the NRP wanted him. In fact, they would have castigated him publicly. You understand? The only reason that person is running for the NRP is because they couldn't find anybody else. They went and they asked everybody up to the week before the launch. Well, the same week at the launch, one good friend of mine from Gingerland telling me, 
Why you not try these guys still still behind me, you know? They're still behind me. What what I should do? I tell them I ain't I ain't running for them. I ain't even supporting them. So why they want me to run for them? They want me to run and then I'm not going to vote for myself because I'm not supporting an RP. That's what that person said to me, a ginger lander. So they could not find anybody to run. And so they had to crawl back and go to who, you know, has been asking. And on the CCM side, we have the Honorable Eric Evelyn, a man who has given your man service all of his life. You have 52 God children. Oh my. 52. You can't go to Gingerland and not say Eric and not see Eric. He's always involved in everything. I tell you, when you go on the road and you walk with Eric and you and you even go to somebody's house and they have a straight face, as soon as they see Eric, they start to get giddy and smile. Eric! <laughs> because He's a man of the people. And I have seen his performance in government. And I am telling you, he's somebody who has the best interests of Nevis at heart. And I am confident. And I know that when he goes to St. Kitts, he is going to represent us. And we are going to be well represented. And we are going to see the benefits. And then we come down to nine. And we all know that the incumbent in nine is the Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Grant. And the, the Premier, his record, you don't need to talk about his record. When the Premier Mark Grantley walks anywhere, he's recognized people turn because they know this is somebody of substance coming. You understand? Before the premier went over to sink it up. Let me, let me, let me. Done with all this premier talk. Before Mark went over to sink it to represent in the in the federal government, there was a different kind of atmosphere over there. You know, as soon as he got over there after that by-election in 2007, everything changed. You all know that, right? Every single thing changed. Mark Brantley, a year in the place, you know. <laughs> he announced that he was there. Immediately, Douglas started to act up. You'll never see Douglas so touchy before. It was Mark who did that. Immediately, the opposition in sync has got hope. Where do you think that hope came from? It was Mark. And guess what? Eventually, the government changed. And he became a minister in the government. And we have all seen the benefits of it here in Nevis. And you're going to hear more about it tonight. And who's running against him? Dr. Daly. Okay? Pass me and Daly get us. I don't really want to say too much things. You know. But think about it. What has he been successful at? Ask yourself the question. What, what has he done? What has he been successful at? It's, it's a kind of rhetorical question, you know, because I want all of you on the live to think about it. Think about it. Agriculture. Success? Chicken farming, success? Should I go on? Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hear a lot more about it. But when you compare the two gentlemen, you really should not compare them because they're not in the same league. They are not in the same league. Just this afternoon, you know. Just this afternoon, I'm in constituency number nine, up in Upper St. John's, okay? So, 
I happen to go by this place where a couple young fellas and so on, you know, they, they, they like to congregate there. But they, they're social distancing, eh? But they congregate in there, so I walk through there, and I see a black vehicle in there with a white roof. And I see two gentlemen in there. One of them don't get so much licks from Mark. Okay? And then I see the new NRP candidate in there. So I walk in and I talk into some of the fellows them and so on. And so I go and I walk up to the new candidate and I shook his hand and I say, How are you doing? Welcome to St. John's. What are you doing in my neck of the woods? He said, Oh, this is your area? I said, Yes, I'm here all the time. But you know what happened? I did talking to the fellows them. And about a minute and a half, no more than that, a minute and a half after they drive out and they left. You understand? And as soon as they left, you know what the fellows them say? Uh, what them I come up here for? I thought they filed a, a, a case in court to say they don't want us in nine. You understand? They filed a case in the court to say, we don't want these people up here in nine. But then they're still going up to try to talk to them. The fellows them say, well, if they come and they have anything to give, we're going to take it. But really and truly, we ain't got nothing to give them. You understand? But a minute and a half after I talked to the man, he gone. Ladies and gentlemen, I am just the chairperson for tonight. You know, and that was my little um, entry. I'm looking to see if I have my first speaker here ready. And I have gotten the signal that my first speaker is here. And I know whenever he comes to the mic, he brings a lot of substance. As a matter of fact, you know, we could have just as easily put him in the race. And it would have been the same results as CCM representative going over to Bastia. Because what? We have a lot of talent in CCM. We have a lot of good people in CCM. When, whenever you see good people around, they want to gravitate to the concerned citizens movement. You know why? Because they know that we are the best party for the people of Nevis. They know that we are the only party that have the interests, the best interests of the people of Nevis at heart. So without any further ado, I want to welcome one of the hardest working men in Nevis. A man of integrity, an honest man, a good man, the representative for Nevis One in the local circuit, none other than the Honorable Spencer Brand. Yeah. A man is still a man. We got him with a jacket and tie. I'm him a fool. The only difference is when I'm good or evil. Oh, a man is still a man. When I'm rich or poor, black or white for sure. The only difference is when I'm good or evil. Listen, friend, you see lots of different people in the streets. I've been cadets in love. This is what they do day to day, just to get a little food to eat. Oh yeah. Then you have others wearing suit and tie, work a good night to five, and take it for granted that they're living a better life. I say the color of our skin don't mean a thing if we do good or commit to sin. We're all judged by the same. Jah is His holy name. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. DJ. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Troy Youth and Labour. <laughs> ladies, <and laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be here tonight. I am a little bit late because, you know, we were doing a little legwork this afternoon and we ran a bit behind the eight ball, so... I want to apologize, you know, we don't normally start these meetings late, but we had to do what we had to do on the, on the trail. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are here. On a Friday night, 
the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And let me say a very pleasant good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon to those who are listening to us, to those who are viewing via the various platforms. And today I got a, a very encouraging message from an elderly lady all the way in London. And she said to me, we are five hours ahead of you on the island of Nevis. But we enjoy listening to the entire team. And she wanted to say to us to continue the good works that we are doing and continue bringing a good and positive message for the people of Nevis and for the people of St. Kitts. And I felt encouraged because often time we come and we bring a message and we recognize that while the, I was going to say while the crowd is small, it's a different kind of energy because we are not in the normal campaign setting here because of COVID. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to say from this CCM platform to all those viewers and to all those listeners, we certainly appreciate the encouragement and we certainly appreciate the support. We know in different parts of the world, in England and the United States, where we have many of our friends and family and supporters who are going through this turbulent time with COVID, they are still listening and they are still watching. And I want to say to you to continue to remain safe. And I certainly pray that you would be well and weather this storm of COVID. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today I got a telephone call from a young man who said to me that he understand that I, Spencer Rudolph Brand, is going around paying people money to vote in this election. And I, <laughs> I said to the young man, Repeat what you just said. And he said that he understood that I, Spencer Rudolph Brand, is going around paying people to vote in this election. And I said to myself, well, I wonder what it is that they're trying to put silver in the last picnic in the I wonder what it is that they are trying to do. And, honey, can you bring my phone there for me, please? The phone is right there. And there. Pass it there for me. And I said to myself, I remember sometime this week, I saw... Honey, honey, honey. Thank you very much, honey. <laughs> sometime this week, I remember seeing a post on Facebook. And I, I took a, a, a screenshot of it. I took a screenshot of it. And while I was there listening to the young man, that little note on Facebook came to my mind. And I thought I would share it with the listeners and the viewers tonight. I will not say who the author of the post was. I will simply read the post, and I believe that some of you would have seen it. And this is what he said. Don't try to destroy one's reputation with a lie. 
when yours can be destroyed with the truth. Let me read it again. I will not call the name of the author. The post simply said, don't try to destroy one's reputation with a lie when yours can be destroyed with the truth. I can read it again. Don't try to destroy one's reputation with a lie when yours can be destroyed with the truth. End of quote. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I believe everybody in Nevis know me. I don't trouble people. I don't interfere with people. Right? But the NRP is so desperate. They recognize that they are staring down the barrel of defeat. They recognize that they do not have the support of the populace of the people of Nevis. So they are going to try any and everything in this campaign to try and win support. But my simple advice to the NRP, it doesn't really need to go on your campaign and on your platform to lie about the CCM and the CCM speakers and try to destroy their reputation and their character. When, according to the author, yours can be destroyed with the truth. And ladies and gentlemen, I will leave that there for the moment. Because a lot of them who is going around saying all manner of evil, I would simply suggest to them that before they start to speak about people, they must look at themselves in the mirror. And when they do, I would hope that when they do, it will give them pause. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the other vexing thing for me is this statement that the candidate for the NRP said about the people of Bath Village. I can talk about Bath, for example. There are three in particular in Bath. They live in here. And now you see them coming out, you know, like termites. Those house Negroes who are coming to tell people in Bath. These are house Negroes who live in Bath. Play it again. Play it again, Mr. DJ. I want the whole... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Bath, for example. There are three in particular in Bath. They live in here. And now you see them coming out, you know, like termites. Those house Negroes. Who are coming to tell people in Bath? These are house Negroes who live in Bath. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these are the kind of things that you would never ever hear on a CCM platform. You would never hear those kind of utterances from a, a CCM platform. That is not our standard. That is not how we think about the people of Nevis. That is not how we look at our various communities throughout the length and breadth of Nevis. But here is a man. Here is a man who is a pathological liar saying these kind of things about the good people of Bath Village. And it upsets me. You know why it upsets me? Because when you look at Bad Village, Bad Village is a very proud community on the island of Nevis. And I said it last night. Because when I heard those comments, I start to think about the many illustrious sons and daughters that came out of Bad Village. I start to think about them. I start to think about the contribution that they have made to the development of the island of Nevis and to Sinkits. 
And I wonder how they are feeling. I wonder what it is that they are thinking. And I wrestle with this kind of statement because it must hurt the people of Bad Village. It must hurt the entire island of Nevis when we hear those kind of utterances. I want to say to the people of Bad Village, and I want to say to all the electorates of Nevis number nine, when you go to the polls next Friday, I want you to send a very strong message to the NRP. I want you to deliver, in my mind, what I would call the knockout blow for the NRP. I want you to give them what someone just called the Mike Tyson punch. I want you that after this election, I want you that after this election that there would be no more NRP. Ladies and gentlemen, your concerned citizens movement party has always sought to elevate the people of Nevis. We have always sought to ensure that no matter where on the island of Nevis you come from, you have a right in this country to be elevated. And that is what the Concerned Citizens Movement Party has done from since its very inception. When you check the track record of CCM, from since its very inception, it has always sought to look out for the interests of the people of Nevis. So we are coming to you in Nevis number nine with the Honorable Mark Brantley as our present representative. And we are saying to the people of Nevis number nine, from Quarter Court all the way up to Pond Hill, when you go to the polls next Friday, ensure that you vote overwhelmingly for the Honorable Mark Brantley. You know, you know that it was because of the Honorable Mark Brantley that many persons in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and as a matter of fact, throughout the entire Commonwealth, why you have the right to vote in your country. Let us not forget that. That election petition, the entire Commonwealth, which include a country like India and Great Britain. You have the right to vote because of the Honorable Mark Brantley and that election petition. Because I put it to you that if what the NRP did by removing those names off of the voters list without due process, no democratic state in the Commonwealth would have ever been able to lose a government again. And I want you to think about that. If that was allowed to stand, no government in the Commonwealth would have lost another election. And that must worth something. That is what I call country above self. That is what I call someone that is putting the interests of the people of his constituency, of his island, and his federation at heart. Others could have said, well, can leave it alone and we fight them in the next election. That could have been a possibility. But if it was allowed to stand, there would have been no way that any opposition would have been able to win another election in this country. And I want to say to the people of Nevis number nine, Cherish your right to vote in your country. And when you go to the polls, 
next Friday, June the 5th. Make sure that you cast that vote for Mark Brantley. He has stood with you, and I want you to stand with him next Friday. In Gingerland, we have the Honorable Eric Evelyn. And I'm seeing as well all kind of stuff that is being said about this gentleman. And I often say that some people just think that politicians' lives are a bed of roses. Some people think that as they believe that we are working for this whole heap of money, and it's a bed of roses. But when you have people, when you have bad-minded people, envious people, people who just grudge you, saying all manner of evil against you, falsely. And you know, if the truth about them were to come out, then they would say, ah, have mercy. But ladies and gentlemen, the life of this politics thing is not easy. Especially when you have people that are just prepared to say all manner of evil against you, that is not true. It is all when I'm going to deal with the everyday hustle and tussle of the job. But, you know, that kind of it takes a toll. And I am saying to the people of Gingerland, you have stood with the Honorable Vance Amri for many years. And we are asking you to transfer that support to the Honorable Eric Evelyn. <laughs> transfer that support to him. I don't even want to say too much about the other fella because... I will leave that alone. I will not, that is not, that is not the CCM standard. Sometimes, you know, you are up here and you, you get a thought and you, you have to check yourself. You know, that is something that our party, our former party leader said to us. Always think before you speak. And he always used to say, loose lips. That's right. Well, I try to control my lip. Ladies and gentlemen of Gingerland, you have a man in Eric Evelyn that you know. You see him walk the streets, he has been amongst you. And he even took 52 of your children as his own. You see what I mean? How <laughs> oh, you look for crazy? He's a boy anyway. Huh? Now, I want you to think about that, you know. 52 godchildren, and he's saying more anyway. Gingerland. <laughs> Gingerland, listen, you can't go wrong with Eric Evelyn. You cannot go wrong with Eric Evelyn. No matter what some of them are saying. And I understand, I understand it, you know. I understand the plan and the strategy. But I want to say to them, CCM could go down those kind of roads too, you know. CCM could, but that is not our standard. That is way below our class. We took the high road. You know, all of us from Nevis, we know how to rumble. We don't, we, we just won't. Ladies and gentlemen of Gingerland, your decision on the 5th of June is a very simple one. Vote for the hammer. Vote for the Honorable Eric Evelyn. And make sure you continue that good representation that you've had with the Honorable Vance Army to Eric Evelyn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to Nevis number 11. 
And oh, St. Thomas's, St. Thomas's. St. Thomas's, I am appealing to you. The record would show, and the Honorable Mark Grantley outlined a very sorry tale last night. And I stood there and I listened to it. And as a Nivision, you know, it, it, it hurt. Listening to those numbers last night and seeing them earlier in the day, you say, well, boy, I mean, well, 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 goodness gracious me. Yeah? Free money giving away. Free money giving away. And all you could have get, gotten was a $10 million loan. Now, ladies and gentlemen of Nevis number 11, St. James's and St. Thomas's, I want you to change the tide of history on the 5th of June. I am appealing to you in Nevis number 11 to change the tide of history in Nevis number 11. I am asking you to go out in your numbers and support the Honorable Alexis Jeffers as your next representative for Nevis number 11. The Honorable Alexis Jeffers' DNA is all over Nevis. And sometimes, you know, in cabinet we just have this little tussle because every one of us wants what we want, but <laughs> sometimes you, you, you really have to because he's going to bulldoze him. I want to see the day when the Honorable Alexis Jeffers goes to a parliament in St. Kitts. I want to see that. Because you know what will happen? The Honorable Mark Bantley is the consummate negotiator and, and um, statesman and that kind of thing. But Pitbull Alexis is going to be a different case. Pitbull Alexis is going to be a different case. And you know, the Honorable Van Sammy, who is there, he have his nice, quiet style, and, and he get things done. But Pitbull Alexis is going to be a different story. And I'm saying to the people of St. James's and St. Thomas's, it is time that you send Pitbull Alexis into Bastia to ensure that we see greater benefits for the people of Nevis. So, St. Thomas's. I am making a special appeal to you. <laughs> you put two of it tonight. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, on a, on a serious note, um, seriously, I'm appealing to the people of St. Thomas's. You have an opportunity to strengthen the hand of Nevis. And I want to say that again to the people of St. Thomas's. You, more than ever, will decide the benefits of Nevis, whether we will see greater benefits or whether we will not. It will rest on you in St. Thomas's, whether we like it or not. And I know that some people may not want me to put that burden on you. But it is, and that is the fact. I am saying to you, St. Thomas, is to come home. Come home and to be a part of something great in this federation. You have sent a man to Bastia for the last 20 years. And we have looked high and low. We have looked far and wide for something that you have brought back to the people of Nevis. 
Somebody say, the song from Sparrow, how would that go? Huh. Why, we have a choir here tonight. We have a choir here tonight. I will conduct the choir tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to sing Pitbull Alexis to Bastia. Because I have a feeling it will not be business as usual on the other side of the narrows. If Patches Nisbet is returned, we will have the negativity. We will have the opposition that Nevis don't want anything. When in his heart of hearts, he knows differently. He knows differently. He lives in Nevis. He drives in Nevis. He don't drive in Nevis? Yes, I forgot. Somebody said they took my license. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, I don't know if it's true. I, I hear things. Ladies and gentlemen, Nevis number 11 is ripe to change the course of history. St. Thomas says, it is right for you to come home. It is right for you to come home on the side of victory and on the side of right. I want you, St. Thomas's, to go and vote for your country on the 5th of June. Vote for the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. And if I am saying it plain, if you vote for him and he don't deliver, then you go back and you do what you've done before. Ladies and gentlemen, this election is a critical one. We want you to ensure that you keep the momentum in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And there is a lot of distraction, there is a lot of noise, there is a lot of lies that is flowing around. I want to say to the people of Nevis, stay focused. Stay with your CCM message, because what you hear from this platform is truth and nothing but the truth. We don't have to lie about a soul. Because if we open our mouths and start to speak the truth, a lot of them would be in jail tonight. A lot of them would be in jail. Ladies and gentlemen, I say to you tonight, our three candidates is depending on you to ensure that Nevis can see a better day. In Nevis number 11, we are asking you to support the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. In Nevis number 10, we are asking you to support the Honorable Eric Evelyn. And in Nevis number 9, we are asking you, especially Bad Village, especially Bad Village, I want you to vote overwhelmingly for the Honorable Mark Bantley. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my simple plea to you tonight. Keep the momentum. Stay on course. All three for we and vote CCM on the 5th of June. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are top ten boys. We voted for CCM again. CCM go keep it up, keep it up, up, up. Just keep it up, 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 up. Keep it up, CCM. Keep on the music so long, you want me bounce up and say, you know?
but I don't have that talent. <laughs> Take it easy, DJ. I can't dance. <laughs> Don't worry now, you know, to hype up the crowd. Um, 6th of June. Maybe 6th of June we might be tired and sleepy. But whenever we decide to celebrate after the victory, I'm going to give a little bounce and I'm going to give a little hype up. I'm going to practice to do it. Eh? You understand? Ladies and gentlemen, that was the Honorable Spencer Brand. He had a lot of good things to say. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this election is very, very simple. You know, if, if we had people on the other side who you couldn't look at and say, but maybe they're going to bring some good representation or some good service to the people of Nevis, we could have said, well, you know, it's an it's a election that you have to fight. But when you look at the NRP, when you look at the track record of the NRP, it has been a track record of non-representation when it comes to the federal level. Twice the public servants and the civil servants of Nevis, checks have been bounced. 85 and 2014. And what did, what did they have in common? NRP was in a coalition government, in the federal government. The two times it happened, they were in a federal government. You think that could happen with CCM in any federal government? That can't happen. That could never happen. Because nobody in CCM gonna sit down and let that happen. Tall, nothing tall, go sir. You understand? We are here to represent our people. We want to make the Federation better. You understand? And as long as everything in the Federation is even Stevens, as long as everybody is getting their fair share, as long as everybody is getting their equitable share, as long as it does not make a difference if you're from Basti or if you're from Charlestown, then there is not going to be any problem. But the minute that there is inequity, the minute that being born in Nevis or living in Nevis make you any worse off, then we have a problem. You understand? And the CCM is here to represent Nevis people. And we're not going to just sit down like lambs. The NRP, when they sit in the federal government, he better than a deer because they're not serving any purpose. And we have seen that. I'm not talking about anything that has not happened. It has happened. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have to move on. I'm only the host. I'm not the speaker. You see me trying to jump up, and I can't jump up? That not for me. Me not got a talent. Everybody got different talent. Everybody know how to bring out different things. So I want to call somebody now to the mic, somebody to the podium who has a lot of different talents among them. He know how to jump up, he know how to bounce, he know how to get the people hype. He know how to talk to people, he know how to love up people and so on. Everywhere you go with him, everybody love him. He's a people person, a genuine people person. It comes naturally. He's a talent, God-given talent. Natural is just who he is. It is his character. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the now representative for Gingerland locally and the next representative for Nevis 10, the Honorable Eric This is Evening. my testimony, everybody. How God favored me in spite of my enemies. And if God didn't save me, he would be saved in you. My name is Eric Evening. Oh, my God.
Good night, good night, good night. It's a different style every night. Because I got style and they grudge me for that. Good night, everybody. I want to say good night to all of the lovely people who are gathered here. And I want to say a special good night to all of the lovely people who are listening and who are watching. And I chose that song tonight, God favored me and he's favoring the concerned citizens movement party as well because as minister brand came and he spoke he said that this is the time when you're going to hear all kinds of things and you know the attacks are coming but you notice the more the attacks come is the younger I look. Because God favored me. God favors me. So the more the attacks come, the more energetic I'm gonna get, the younger I'm gonna look, and the faster I'm gonna march into Bastia. The faster I'm gonna march into Bastia. Because we have to realize that in this little island, there's no need for the pulling down and no need for the lies. There's no need for that. Because you know what? No matter the lies that come, they're going to fall off my back. They are going to fall off my back because the lies will never stand. And the Concerned Citizens Movement Party, we don't stand for lies. That is why we have a momentum and we're keeping the momentum. And you know what? I'm sure you all don't realize, you know, today is Friday. Today is Friday. And in seven days, in seven short days, this time so next Friday night, the results will be starting to come in. And the hammer. It will be hammer time next Friday. Big time. All across Nevis. Hammer time in Nevis 9. Hammer time in Nevis 10. And hammer time in Nevis 11. And so, with all of what is coming, I want to tell the people of Nevis, God favors me, and God favors Alexis, and God favors Mark, and God favors CCM, and God favors Nevis yes, because we are the party yes, that is fighting for the development of Nevis and for the development of the people of Nevis. <laughs> and so, because God favors us so much, I can smell that victory already. When we walk through in Nevis 9, the response is overwhelming. The positivity coming from the people of Nevis 9 is heartening. When they see the Honorable Mark Grandly walking through, people say the boss man, that's the boss. So when we walk to Nevis 9, 
the response is overwhelming. And it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. Because the people of Nevis 9 are telling the Honorable Mark A. G. Brantley, we are standing with you because you are standing with us. The people of Nevis 9 are saying, we have not seen this kind of development in a very long time. And so we must stick with the party. We must stick with the blue. And you know what as well? Over in 11, Alexis got a, a moment of what they're going to, you know. Alexis Jeffers has a momentum going in Nevis 11 that you cannot take your eyes off of. A young lady called me from Newcastle today said, Eric, it's the first time, it's the first time since I've been voting that I have gotten a call from the other side. And she's not the only one. Numerous persons have been saying it. They are desperate. And that is why the attacks are coming. But the attacks will come and they will strengthen us. And I really want to say thank you to all of the great people on Nevis and overseas who have been sending me these encouraging and supportive messages every day, many times per day. And I really want to thank you all because with your help and with God's blessings, the attacks can come because we will survive. We will survive. And so I can smell that victory already. Next week, Friday, it will be a historic day in the island of Nevis when all three seats all three for we in 2020. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that will send. That will send a very strong message to all of Nevis, to all of St. Kitts, and especially to the opposing party. We have to show them that this positive energy, this positive vibe that we have, this momentum that we have, will take us straight to victory. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have been coming night after night. I have been coming night after night. And I've been outlining to you things that I believe I can do when I get to Bastia in the Federal Assembly and in the Federal Cabinet. Last week, I spoke to you about sports. Last night, I spoke to you about culture. A couple nights ago, I spoke to you about leadership that you can trust. A couple nights ago, I spoke to you about the credentials that you should have when you want to represent people and give them proper and effective representation. I spoke to you about all of that. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to speak briefly to you about our young people and some of the programs that we can continue to collaborate with the federal government on in the area of youth. And our young people are very important to us. They are very important to the Concerned Citizens Movement Party and government. And you know, this afternoon when we were walking through Stony Grove, and a senior lady said to us, and it is something I have at the back of my mind, she said, listen, the young people are the future, and they better go out to vote and vote for the CCM. The young people, young people, I hope you are listening. You are the future, and you must go out and speak, and speak loudly. Your voice must be heard. It has to be heard across all of Nevis in 19 and 11. Alexis Jeffers. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I am responsible for the Department of Youth in Nevis. And of course, there are numerous initiatives within youth that our Ministry of Youth and the Ministry of Youth on St. Kitts would collaborate in. 
One such program is the 25 Most Remarkable Teens. And that is an exceptional initiative that is led by the federal government, but with assistance from the Nevis Island Administration, from the Department of Youth here on Nevis, where we are looking out for our young people. This is an outstanding program that brings out the best in our young people. And it is so moving, ladies and gentlemen, when we can see our young people going to the parliament in Bastyr and being recognized as one of the 25 most remarkable teens. It is such an honor and it is such a pride. It's a humbling experience to see how the young people, when they go to Bastyr, how they are beaming with pride, how happy they are. I have been fortunate to attend, I think it's two of the um, programs so far, and I was blown away, absolutely blown away by our young people on Nevis when they joined their counterparts in St. Kitts. And you know, the good thing about this program is, it's not just a program for you to say, I'm going to receive an award. It is a program that goes much further than that. It is a program whereby when you are nominated as a 25 most remarkable teen, that you must engage in a project after you would have received your award. And so, the self-esteem of our young people on Nevis who have been a part of that program, who have been nominated, and who have received their awards. And you know what is so good about it? The students or the young people, the teens, are receiving their awards from members of the Federal Assembly. And when I was there last year, you know what somebody told me? Eric, next year you're going to be giving one of them awards. You're going to be right there in the assembly presenting a couple of those awards. And I made note of that. Because I believe what the gentleman said was right. Because I believe that next year, with God's help, and with the help of the people of Nevis, I will be there at that special sitting, along with Alexis and Mark, and we will be presenting some of the 25 most remarkable teen awards. And so, we want to strengthen that relationship that we have with the Department of Youth on St. Kitts to continue to ensure that our young people on Nevis, our youth, our teens on Nevis, continue to be a part of that program. I'm sure there were many years ago when maybe just a one or two were benefiting. But of course, since the team unity arrangement, many more young people are benefiting. And so that is just one area as we look at our young people. And I want the young people in Nevis to aspire to that as well, because it's an auspicious occasion when you're able to go to the parliament in St. Kitts and receive an award, a glass award, from one of the representatives in the Federal Assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about our young people, one of the most important things that our young people speak about is an education. And ladies and gentlemen, since the Honorable Mark Brantley has been in the federal government, there has been numerous opportunities. Opportunities can be done for our young people. No more are our young people just going to the US and to the USVI and UE for their education, the Honorable Mark Brantley, through his diplomacy, through his effective work in foreign affairs, have brought so many scholarships that the young people of St. Kitts and Nevis are not even able to take up all. Look at the scholarships in Cuba, the scholarships in Taiwan, the scholarships in Morocco, the scholarships in Georgia, and I could go on and on and on. And we know, we are confident that the Honorable Mark Bradley will be back in the federal government. 
And so the scholarship opportunities will continue to come because we are continuing to look out for our young people. They are our future leaders. They are the future doctors and nurses and teachers and future premier and future deputy premier. And so we must continue to ensure that our young people are trained and trained well. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, we here in the Nevis Island administration, we support our young people as well. When we were in the Stony Grove area this afternoon, one young man came and he said, thank you all for bringing us home from Jamaica. We are happy. This is a government, the federal government is a government that I intend to be a part of that is caring. And that is why they brought home over 50 students from Jamaica. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we talk about the development of our young people, let us talk about our development of our young people in sports. There are so many young people who are getting involved in sports now. And the federal government continues to collaborate with the Nevis Island administration. And through the strengthening of our hand in Bastyr, we will continue to look out for our young people. Just before the COVID came on, we were already in talks with the folks from across the water. with regards to sending a contingent to the Carifta Games. And of course, we know the talent that we have here on Nevis. And of course, that talent that we have here on Nevis is being nurtured by the first class Mondo track that we have over there at Low Ground, built through federal funds that came from the SIDF. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we need to continue to have that fantastic relationship, the best that it has ever been between St. Kitts and Nevis. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we continue to look after our young people in education, in the 25 most remarkable teens, in sports, and of course, when we talk about the Mondo track, I said it a couple nights ago as well, that people from St. Kitts are now coming over to train over here as well. We are going over to train and they are coming, so it's a reciprocal arrangement. A relationship that never existed in the past. Even if it existed, it was weak. And so this government has strengthened that. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was here last night, I spoke about culture. When we look at our young people, the development of our young people in, the, in culture and in the arts as well. When I go to Bast here, I will try to ensure that we have our young cultural artists here on the island of Nevis. They can get some exposure and some training so that they can perfect their respective art. Because culture can take our young people to heights that they have never dreamt of. And so I will continue to champion the cause of our young people in the area of culture. Our young people are the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue to champion the cause of the young people in the area of tourism as well. Of course, we know tourism is our mainstay in the economy in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so a lot of our young people are gravitating towards tourism. We have a lot of our young men and women who are now fabulous and fantastic chefs in the leading hotels in St. Kitts and Nevis. The children nowadays coming from high school, a lot of them are saying, well, I want a career in the hospitality industry. And so we will, as a government, facilitate our young people in getting more training and more exposure in tourism and in hospitality. Because we want, we want, when the tourists come here to St. Kitts and Nevis, they receive an experience like no other. And that is why the Nevis Island Administration and the federal government 
will continue to collaborate to ensure that our young people are properly trained and have that experience to pass on to our guests so that at least our tourism will continue to go from strength to strength. Ladies and gentlemen, our young people are important to us. We have always put our young people on a pinnacle. We have done it at the Nevis Island administration level, and we will continue to do it at the federal level. The Honorable Mark Bradley has proven himself in the federal government, and we want you to give me that opportunity and give Alexis that opportunity as well to work for you in St. Kitts, to bring home the results. The results are coming. They came to the Honorable Mark Brandley. They came to the Honorable Van Samery, and they will come through me. They will come through Alexis, and they will continue to come through Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, you know when we stand at the podium, we can go on and on and on because you know the members of the Concerned Citizens Movement, we have so many ideas, and we got such energy, we got such vibe, we got such momentum that we can stay here and talk all night. But before I end tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want to speak a little more about the credentials that I spoke about last week. And I want people to listen this very carefully. I want to speak about how caring and compassionate and loving the members of the Concerned Citizens Movement are. All of the programs that we have have demonstrated that over and over and over again. I have demonstrated that over and over and over again. And I will say it every night, you know, because I'm proud of it. I have clean hands, clean hands to go to Bastia with. I came into the Nevis Island administration with clean hands, and I will proceed to Bastia with cleaner hands. And all of us, all of us, Mark and Alexis, we can boast of clean hands. We can't talk about anybody else. We can talk about ourselves because our hands are clean. And getting back to the caring nature and how compassionate we are, I personally, ladies and gentlemen, even before I got into politics, even before I got into politics, I have been very caring and compassionate. This afternoon when we were doing our house-to-house -house canvassing, I met a young man who is studying overseas. He reminded me, well, listen, I was a part of your Boys Together for Change group in Hanley's Road, an initiative that I championed through the Empire Sports Club. And you only do these things when you are caring. I cared for the young men of Hanley's Road because I did not want him to go on the wrong road. And that is why we had that initiative going and it was a huge success because I can say it over. You know, every time we come, we speak facts. We have results. We have the evidence. And I will continue to boast that the young men who are part of that program, none of them, none of them ever got into trouble with the law. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can speak. I can speak about the program with the seniors of Hanley's Road that I orchestrated as well through the Empire Sports Club. Every December, every December, those seniors of Hanley's Road, and as I said, I'm talking facts, eh? Because we of the CCM come with facts. And I have the facts at my fingertips. I didn't, have to, I didn't even have to open up beliefs like Mark. I didn't even have to open any grip. Because you know when you know your onion, you have it at your fingertips. Right? And so, the program that is running with the people of Hanley's Road, the seniors of Hanley's Road, is something that has been going over 10 years. And ladies and gentlemen, if you see how those seniors beam, 
If you see how they beam every December, when they are taken around the island, when they are taken to Von Radio, when the whole world can hear them speak, when they were taken to the Mount Nevis Hotel, when they are being taken to the Golden Rock Hotel for lunch. Now tell me, isn't that caring? Now as I said before, God favored me. And so all of the attacks that will come, they will come and they will go. Because the good thing about it is, the people of Nevis knows Eric Evelyn. The people of Nevis know that. And I want to say as well, and I want to say it in slow motion. Because I want everybody to hear this, especially the opposition party. Because members of the opposition are trying their best. They are fighting a losing battle. And they are trying their best to mess with my character and my reputation. But I want to tell them that it won't work. It won't work. And so, I want to impress upon all of you tonight, especially the members of the opposition, that whenever you question my caring and compassionate ability, and whenever you try to mess with my reputation, and when you try to mess with my character, let me take you back to 2018. Let me take you back to 2018. I was elected to government in December of 2017. And in 2018, in 2018, I said I'm going to be very slow because I want it to sink in. In 2018, I did an unprecedented act. I want you all to listen good. I have the enviable record of the only politician in Nevis. And when I did it, I wasn't even, I, I wasn't even a year as a politician yet. The only politician in Nevis who has given his political opponent a job. Let anybody dispute that. Let anybody dispute that. Do us. Yeah. Uh. And so, let them question my character. Let them question that. We'll talk about that later. Not now. But I want to remind them. I want to remind them that I gave someone who stood on a platform every night with people who castigated me and said all manner of evil against me. But he came and he asked for a job and I gave him a job. And it was the concerned citizens movement government that gave him a job. Tell me, where in the world you ever hear about that? Where in the world you ever hear about that? Question my character. Question that. And you know, the thing about it, when I gave him the job, the people of the CCM were making a heap of noise, you know, say, Lord, where you getting the job for? He was your opponent. But guess what? This is a government that cares. This is a government that looks after the fears of everyone. Because we say people matter most. He's on the vision. And I said he have to eat as well. And so we made the decision. Irrespective of the fact that he was my political opponent. He ran against me. And the Honorable Minister of Finance. The Honorable Premier of Nevis. The decent man that he is. Even though you are jealous of the man so much. The <laughs> decent man that he is gave me the green light and said, hire the young man. Now tell me if the opposition party has ever done anything like that. Tell me. I don't know if it has ever happened in St. Kitts. I don't know if it has ever happened in any parts of the region. 
but I have that record. And it is there to stand and it's there to show. It's facts we're talking here on this platform. Strictly facts. I want to say, I want to make it abundantly clear. And I want to borrow some words from the Premier. I want to make it pellucid. I want to make it pellucid that I, Eric Rohan Evelyn, has never disrespected anyone from any political platform or from any platform whatsoever. I have never made any derogatory remarks about anyone in any part of Nevis, whether it's in St. George, whether it's in St. John, St. Paul, St. Thomas, St. James. Because I am not made of that metal. I am a humble man from Hanley's Road. And my parents of blessed memory, the late Agnes and Edric Evelyn, didn't bring me up like that. So if other people want to pass derogatory comments, let them go right ahead and do it on the other side. But that is not me. That is not Eric Rohan Evelyn. And so no matter what they say, the truth will always prevail. I have never, and I will never. I stand for morals. I stand for principles. And they will always prevail. Blessings all for my life, Eric Evelyn. I feel the people the journey just to the place. Gratitude is a must, Yes. And so I want to make it clear tonight that I do not disrespect people, and I never will. And so, I know this nowadays, every time I speak, it is misconstrued. It is misconstrued. But I want to say that I am bigger than that. The CCM is bigger than that. Mark Brandley is bigger than that. Alexis Jeffers is bigger than that. And we will continue to hold the flag of Nevis flying high. You will never get three persons to represent Nevis in the federal cabinet, in the federal assembly, like you will get from Mark, Alexis, and me. And that is why we are asking you to rally with us. Because we will rally with you. We will continue to stick to our mantra people matter most and because people matter most why we respect people that is why we respect people and that is why our standards are so high and so ladies and gentlemen let it ring out throughout nevis let it reverberate throughout St. kids let it resonate in the entire diaspora that I, Eric Rohan Evelyn, I have standards. I have standards. And when it comes to CCM, class is class. Class is class. And you know the rest. And we will always set apart ourselves from all of the others. And so, irrespective of what is being said, we are standing our ground. We are marching to victory. We're bigger than that. And DJ, you know what? Jesus. Bigger than all of what they're saying. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. God bless you. We're bigger than that. Jesus, bigger than that.
Thank you very much, Eric. <laughs> you know, you know, desire to wait until Eric gone fully off the stage, right? <laughs> I don't want to get mixed up in that dancing. I see, since Eric dancing on the stage, I see all kind of people go and try to dance. I see the clips of them. They don't know what they might do. They don't got a clue what they might do. You see me? I try to stick to what I know. This is serious, you know. I try to stick to what I know. And they got some people. You understand? They got some people. And they come in to you as if this thing is some sort of comedy show. For 20 years, people vote for them to represent them. They don't have a thing to show. And they got it hard to come back, you know? They got more heart than a pack of cards. You understand? They don't do nothing for nobody. Well, except for Hector, who become an advisor. And you know, they're so sneaky about it. Nobody even know about it. Until we got that post from Premier Mark Brantley on Facebook. Nobody knew about it. It's only by chance I read the post because I did say to myself, man, I don't know most of these things. I'm not going to really read the post. Let me just read the topic and then like it. But I start to read the little introduction and I said, buy this thing sweet, you know? And when I go in there, I almost miss the thing because I'm scanning too fast. I say, wait, what that? Advisor? 7,500? Yeah. This is new information. You know what? Don't load of people call me, say, by child, you've been know about this thing. I say, shame, I didn't know. I like to do a lot of research, you know? And I like to believe I know a lot of things. But I didn't know that. They hide it up. And then what happened? A couple nights after, Akila doing her lunch. You understand? New information come out. Both Patrice and Hector got landing in SK. You understand? In West Bastia. While poor people in West Bastia can't get a piece of land. You understand? Their representation at all times have been for themselves, not for the people of Nevis. And so we here in the CCM are saying, when you send our candidates over to Bastia, they're not going over there to represent themselves. They're going over there to represent all the people of Nevis. The ordinary man on the street in Nevis can feel the impact of that representation. When things come over from Sinkits, they can feel it. You know, when you listen to the NRP talk, what they say? Oh, the Mando truck is there, but the stadium not built yet. Oh, the hospital is taking a little time. Oh, something about the treasury. And you know why they say? The Bible talk about a thing. They call it hypocrite. It's hypocrites there. Because when they had the opportunity, they couldn't deliver a thing except loan. Loan that Nevis people have to pay back. So because CCM go in and CCM get some resources to be used for the people of Nevis, all of a sudden, they got a problem with it. All of a sudden, they're saying, oh, things come over to Nevis, but oh, they would have do this or they would have do that. They would not have do a thing. You know why? They would not get no resources. The only thing the NRP has been good for is racking up debt. Debt that we, when we came in as CCM, had to try to find ways to deal with. And, you know, we got a couple more days. So we're going to talk a little bit about debt. They ain't even giving me a good chance to talk numbers. I know me like to talk numbers, but numbers take time to talk. Oh. But tonight, Time is rolling, so we have to roll on. Our candidates are here to represent. And you know, our next speaker is somebody 
who you can see and feel his representation every single day. Don't care where you walk in Nevis. You understand? The electricity is very, very stable in Nevis now. Why? Because he went and he represented. You understand? We see a lot of improvements in housing and all sorts of things because of his representation. Well, give him the opportunity to do a little bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe if you, the people of Nevis 11, put your trust and give your vote to the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, you will be happy that you did. You will be pleased with the level of representation and the level of results that you will receive over the next five years from him being in the federal government. So ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, please give a warm welcome to the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. The Prince of Darkness walks Yes, Zook or O Zook? <laughs> o Zook. <laughs> good night, people. I want to say good night to all of you who are here this evening. A small, big crowd. <laughs> because the amount of noise we're hearing, it seems like we have a massive crowd here tonight. I want to also say good night to all those who are listening via Von Radio and those who are following this meeting via Facebook. Twitter, and all of the social media platforms out there. You know, when we thought about coming here to Caribbean Cove, I never imagined that we would have had such electricity, such a wonderful time. And I'm sure there are persons who are sitting home in their living rooms, and uh, they're certainly hoping that they would, should have been here or would have been here. But everyone cannot be here. But that is why we are trying to duplicate what we would have had perhaps up in Market Shop, perhaps down in Newcastle, Fountain, somewhere in St. John's in Brownhill. We are trying to duplicate a public meeting here. And I think we are doing a wonderful job. I think we are doing a wonderful job because the reviews and the comments that we have been getting are all positive. And thanks to the great minds in the CCM, we did say when we launched a couple Saturdays ago that you would see this particular setting duplicated somewhere and it's been done. So as I said before, we are CCM leads. Others are bound to follow and they have certainly done that. But we'll continue to lead as a great party and we'll continue to lead this island and lead and represent, as we have said before, in the federal parliament and federal cabinet. So CCM party will continue to lead and others will always follow. You know, last night I started and I, I want to, hey, it's becoming like a joke now. Because the calls are coming in still in St. James. Last night I exposed a one, what was the name again, boy? Jasmine Johnson. Well, Jasmine Johnson gone into retirement now. I understand there is no Eleanor Brown. So every night I'm going to come back with a new name. Because you see, all of these names apparently doesn't exist. But someone is behind these names and behind these calls. But that's all right. That is their new way of campaigning. And you know why they're doing that? The candidate that they're putting forward. 
Patrick's name, but I'm going to call his name. He's so afraid to face the people of Nevis 11. He's so afraid to face the people of St. James that he's putting others to make calls on his behalf. But perhaps he cannot drive into the constituency. Perhaps he's not sober-minded enough to come and talk to the people of St. James or St. Thomas's. So that is why the calls are coming. So let the calls come. When we come tomorrow night, I'm going to come with a new name because Leno Brown is going to retire after tonight. It's going to retire after tonight, but that's fine. Let me say to the people of St. James and the people of St. Thomas's, more so to the people of St. James because I've been elected there since 2011, but I've been in government since 2013. When they call and you ask the person on the other, well, on the other line, you ask them, well, what has Patrice done? If they don't answer, you answer for them and tell them, well, boss, from what I know, he hasn't done a thing. But here's what Alexis Jeffers has done, and here's what we have in St. James. And these are the things that we are proud of. We are proud of the fact that we have a seaport, we have an airport, we have an international university, the same university that Patrick said he was going to mash up the monopoly. We have even ATM. You don't have to come to town to get money. Tried to steal one from the airport, <laughs> but there's one still up there in St. James. We have churches, we have schools, we have sporting facilities. We have, listen, I have said to my colleagues in cabinet, boy, St. James have everything. We're going to soon secede from Nevis. I say it as a joke, eh? I say it as a joke, but you all don't take it serious. Because we are glad that the people of St. James can proudly say, that they have all of the amenities that exist throughout their whole of Nevis. It means that Nevis is complete. Complete. Oh man, you have brand new housing facility, bigger and better housing, proud homeowners over there in seed of your housing in 14 acre. So we have it all. St. Thomas's have most of it as well too. They don't have a seaport, they don't have a airport, but they have housing. They have banks, banks. And those banks came under your CCM party. So when it's all said and done, I can boast of many things that have been done under your great CCM party. But what the other side can boast of, I don't know. I speak for us. So when they call, do not get into any argument. Do not get into any shouting game with them. If you want to engage them, let out all of the things that the CCM party and Alexis Jefferson brought to the parishes of St. James and St. Thomas's Nevis 11. And that has been done in the local Nevis Island Assembly and Cabinet. And you want to wrap that all up and say, Lord, if Alexis bring that at the local stage, imagine what you're going to do from the federal stage. Imagine that. And I know once you challenge them with all of those facts, they'll stop calling you soon and very soon. Or they'll continue to change name, but let's leave that because I ain't got no time for that. We are running out of time tonight. I want to be very brief, but I want to make some points. Eric, when you come again, no stop so long. Seriously, don't stay so long. You don't even have to campaign so hard. Yeah. Mark Brantley and myself are in a fight, so we want to fight, and we want to bring the message every night. So I'm here to say to you tonight, I'm going to focus on Nevis housing and land. You know why the NRP is not talking about the Nevis housing and land? There's nothing for them to talk about, because all of the governments prior to this particular administration have had to deal with all of the corruption, all of the underhand dealing, all of the on-the-table dealing of the land and housing over the years. And many governments have fallen, fallen as a result. I want to make the commitment to the Honorable Mark Bentley, who is the premier of this great island, that in name this housing and land will not be an issue for you to deal with that as a leader. It will not be an issue for you to deal with as an administration or the leader of an administration here on the island of Nevis. We want to represent and we want to make sure that decency abounds up the Atlanta housing. But let's go back a little because a people who do not know what their history is is bound to perish and fail in the future. 
And when you plan and when you execute, I said before, planning prevents you from stumbling into the future backwards. And that is why we have come with plans and programs as a party. And that is why we have executed plans and programs at the Navy's Housing and Land Develop Corpora Development Corporation to ensure our young men and young women become proud homeowners in this, their blessed land of their birth. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you that I believe the reason why the lone candidate of the NRP in the federal parliament has said that Nevis don't want anything is because Nevis has always had, you know. Nevis has had. But we have had, but we always need more. Because the more we have, the more we can execute our plans and program and develop this country, much, or this island much more. But I want to say to you, when I came into government in 2013, knowing what the CCM would have left behind at the Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation, I want to say to you that the Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation was one of the most financially sound arm of government here on the island of Nevis. It's a statutory body of the Nevis Islanders administration. I want to say, for example, when the CCM demitted office, they left about 52 million or 53 million dollars that was realized from the sale of those lands over their pennies when they sold just about 600 acres to Newfound Hotel Development. Well, the development didn't come, but the lands were sold. Those monies were left behind for the NRP to utilize. That's $53 million. They sold an additional 130 acres of land down there and realized just over $20 plus million out of those sales. That was in excess of $70 million. On the top of that, the CCM would have left $27 million in an escrow account there at Scotiabank. Add it all up. Add it all up. My maths tell me that's almost 90 something million dollars. All that was left in the hands of the Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation. We came to government in 2013 and I was thinking, yes. Those monies were left behind because I listened to the Honorable Van Samory. We all would have followed the exploits of the CCM in government. And we were hoping to meet a more buoyant government, more financially sound government. But what we met, I can say clearly to you the most money we met in any account was about $335,000 in that same escrow account, that's US dollars, let's say about just over 800,000 US dollars in the same escrow account that had 27 million dollars in it. So do the match, over 9 million dollars went from that account. We also met a fixed deposit up there, the Navy's Cooperative Credit Union, which was just about 800,000 dollars. All of the other accounts were showing $26,000 easy, $40,000 easy. There was about six accounts. None of them was over 100000 If you add up everything you, you met, less than $1.5 million behind. I'm just giving you an, an approximate amount. So after me leaving, sorry, over $93 million, that's what the CCM left behind. We met less than one point five, or just about $1.5 million. So when you hear them say that Nevis didn't want anything, I suspect because they would have met a buoyant economy, a buoyant financial situation. They went across the sinkies and said, we don't want nothing, bro. We don't want nothing. They always sinkies over there. Well, Lord, those passport monies were rolling in between 2010, 2011, 2012. In excess of $1.2 billion was in the SIDF. They were saying, Nevis don't want nothing. I lay that out to you, my people, because when it's all said and you hear them say, we're going to uh, send kids, sorry, with capping and begging. What total respect, disrespect, sorry, to the people of Nevis. What total disrespect to the representative of the CCM who would have gone there, sat at the table and said, Nevis wants his rightful share. They say, we are going capping and begging. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, those kind of comments are certainly not in the vision. Those kind of comments are certain not, certainly not 
consistent what you with whom you call true divisions or divisions who have a love and a pride in their beloved country or beloved island. So when you look at all those monies, when you look at what was existing at the point in time when the lone and happy representative was in the cabinet of the federal administration or the federal government, you said to yourself, what could a Nevis have been like if we were to get our rightful share at that time? You had over $93 million at the NHLDC. You had $1.2 billion in the SIDF and the kids that was available to all of us as divisions and nothing was asked for. You add all that together. Let's say we got 25%, you do the maths and you'll see. Add that to what was existing at the point in time or what was available to us. And you understand the amount of money we as the people of Nevis could have had to our own disposal to develop the island of Nevis in many ways. When you do, when you do a little bit of calculation and you look at what we have gotten since we have been in this arrangement, if we didn't decide to join with Team Unity, that's the People's Labour Party and the Palm Party, to form Team Unity, we wouldn't have gotten the same peer I tell you over there at Oali that support. We wouldn't have gotten all of the things that we have mentioned, support. We wouldn't have gotten, listen, I don't want to rehash all that. You have heard it all and you know exactly what we have gotten. We have gotten all of these things because we have decided that we wanted to be at the negotiating table. We want to be there so that we can speak on your behalf. We want to be there to negotiate on your behalf. And we want to be there to ensure that what is available to us, we, get, we rightfully get that. And that is our message to the people of Nevis. Our message is very simple and very clear. It is very simple and very clear because there is no need to muddy the waters and there is no need to bring anything complicated to you. We have said that the, the representation that we have had over the last 20 years in Patrice Nisbet, in both the federal and the local, and federal, sorry, and the federal Parliament and federal cabinet has left the island of Nevis in a position where we are. Certainly disappointed in that, and certainly we can do better. And we have come through this campaign, throughout this campaign, and we have say, said to you time and time again, it is time for us to turn a new page. Turn a new page and ensure that we have at the negotiation table at the bargaining table, we have three representatives who can add their voice to the debate there and to ensure that the people of Nevis receive what is rightfully theirs. And it's a very simple message. And it is a very simple proposition. I do not think that we come here to bring any gimmicks and any tricks to you. All of the speakers before me have been very clear in their articulation of the issues. And I want to say to you that we cannot afford to make the mistakes we've made in the past. We have made mistakes in Nevis 11. And of course, I want to say to you that people deserve a chance. And of course, we have given Patrice Nevis Nisbet four chances. He got a chance in 2000. He got a chance in 2004. He got a chance in 2010 and he got a chance in 2015. Four chances. Now if you say someone deserve another chance, he got another chance, another chance, another chance, and another chance. Four chances. And when you look at what he has brought and you look around the constituency of Davis 11, you see absolutely nothing for those four chances. Nothing. The Spanish will say, nada. Nada, nothing. How do you want me to say it in English, Spanish, French, or Dutch? But let me be simple and say in English, not a thing. Nothing. So I'm asking for a chance. I'm asking for a chance. This one chance. 
this one chance, and if I were to bring one thing to the constituency of Nevis 11, then I would have done more than Patrice would have done in 20 years. In 240 months, in, two, in 7,300 days. That is simple. That is a simple request that I'm asking the people of Nevis 11. Listen to me tonight. I'm asking for that one chance. That one chance to turn around the circumstances of that constituency. That one chance to ensure that the people of Nevis 11 are part of the national dialogue. That one chance to ensure that the people of Nevis 11, and by the extension, the people of Nevis, receive what is rightfully theirs. You would never hear me stand up in the federal parliament and say the people of Nevis 11 want nothing. You would never hear me stand up in the national parliament and say the people of Nevis need nothing. Because I am so proud of this great island that, Lord, every single thing we can get, every single thing we can get, we need it. Every penny we need it. We need to develop our infrastructure, roads, water. We need to ensure that we have a sound education system here on the island of Nevis. We want to ensure that housing is expanded. All constituencies, including Nevis 11, receive additional housing. We want to make sure that all of our sporting facilities, cultural facilities, all of the facilities and infrastructure that are geared towards the development of our young men and young women, they are in place. Crime and criminality, all of the resources we need to fight crime and criminality, we are looking for that here in the island of Nevis. And that is why I say tonight, you see how simple I'm putting it over? I want the people of Nevis 11 to understand that this is our time. Our time to change a new, uh, well, turn a new page. Our time to ensure that when we set that platform, build that platform, we are creating the infrastructure for young men and young women of the future to build upon and to ensure that they will be leaving a legacy behind, that their children, their grandchildren, everyone who is yet unborn would be able to flourish and benefit from all of our efforts here in 2020. This island will have to move on after us. And it is important that we leave an island and a legacy behind that everyone that inhabit this island, who live on this island, will be proud citizens and residents and will say and look towards the CCM party and say, that party was a great party that had the best interests of the island of, well, the island of Nevis at heart. And that is a simple message. We don't come with any fluff. We don't come with any gimmicks. We don't come with anything to pull a wool over anybody's eyes. Because you see on the other side, they will come with all kind of gimmicks and they will come and start all kind of personal attacks. I don't come here for that. I can speak all night and whoever is not interested in what I say night after night, whether I repeat it or not, well, so be it. But I have been taught, I have been taught that repetition is the best form of communication. And to communicate effectively, it is always good to repeat and to remind people of what we once had to go through and remind people of what we have accomplished as a great island and a great federation. Tonight we can certainly say we live in a great federation because you know what? Crime and criminality would have been one of the major plank of this particular campaign by the opposition. They would have loved to come out and say, oh, how many persons have died. But when they're glorifying that, listen, all young men and young women were perishing in the island of Nevis, perishing in the island of St. Kitts, perishing in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I tell you, it was one of the major black eyes we had to deal with. But your team, Unity Government, astute leadership, great minds came together and said we had to arrest this crime and criminality and bring about a more tranquil society and communities throughout the federation. So our young men and young women are not dying anymore. They're here to contribute to the development of the island of Nevis, development of the federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and you know the opposition is torn vex, torn moderation vex about that. 
And that is the type of mentality they have. They're looking for all of the negativity, to spew negativity, throw up all up and down the island of Nevis, all up and down the island of St. Kitts and the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Pure negativity. But the opposition can always come on board and say, yes, you have done a good job. They can come and say, you have done a good job, and I will show maturity in politics here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We can commend one another. We can commend a government when it does well. But if they don't want to commend this team, Unity Government, they don't want to commend the system in government in Nevis, I can blow our own trumpet. I'm sorry I didn't have one in my hand. Because I would have blown it loud from all of the hills, from the hills of, well, let's say from the mountain top up there at Nevis Peak. You'd have heard it. You'd have heard it. Because I am proud of our comp accomplishment as a party in government. I'm proud of what we have done with all association with Team Unity. I'm proud of Team Unity ever as a federal government. And of course, that is the reason why the choice is very easy this time. Very easy. No matter what, I want to say to all of you here tonight and those who are listening, all of the noise out there, we have said, and we have a simple mantra, ignore the noise. You see me? I have been campaigning up and down St. James and St. Thomas's. People have been asking me about court case. People have been asking me about injunction. People have been asking me about everything. I tell them I do not think about it. You know why? I am more concerned with the interaction of the voters and the people who reside in the constituency of Navis 11. Around this time when I'm campaigning, I don't want to hear noise. I could recall back in 2017 when I was out there campaigning. I understand Patrice Nisbet and the others went to high courts on the Saturday before the election on the Monday to get people back on the list. I said they could bring out as much as they want because I'm telling you, the licks are going to come anyway. And it did happen. So this time around, no one asked me about no court junction, injunction, sorry. No one asked me about nothing to do with any court. Ask me about the things I can do to make your life and your livelihood better. Ask me what I'm going to do in the federal parliament, whether I'll do even one thing more than what Patrice Nisbet has done. And I'll tell you, yes, I'll do one thing and even more. My exploits as a minister in the NIA have certainly suggested to you, and it's clear to you, that I am prepared to work and work diligently on behalf of the people whom I represent. Speaking of representation, I want to say to the people of Nevis 11, those of you who have not been a part of the national debate, being a part of any policy planning and programs, you can be assured that once I'm in the federal cabinet, I'll always be clamoring for you to be there. I want to also say that I don't know if the Honorable Mark Branty will still be the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, but I want to encourage all of our young men and young women in Nevis 11 and throughout the island of Nevis, when you hear about scholarships, because many have come and many have gone a begging, many will come in the future. And I want to say to you, grab hold of these opportunities. I have been to many different forums throughout the world. And when I speak to ministers of government from St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Grenada, wherever they are from down south, they will tell you that their students are in Morocco. Their students are in Indonesia. Their students are in Georgia. Their students are in the Republic of China, Taiwan. They are all up and down, Mexico, Brazil. They are all over the globe. You know why? The same opportunities that we get here in this federation, they are extended to all of our neighboring islands as well. But interesting thing, instead of persons in the opposition, persons who do not support a government in those islands, instead of them encouraging their students not to take this opportunity, you know what they're telling them, boy, go, take it, it's free. Once it's free, if you could get double education, masters, PhD, or even an undergraduate, go and get it. That is what they're doing out there. But we in this island and those in the opposition seem to be myopic in their view. I encourage you know, young people not to do it. I want to say that from these microphones, young men, young women, when these opportunities come, grab it with both hands. 
Black out the noise. Black out all those who are in the opposition who are discouraging you and dissuading you from grabbing these opportunities. Go and grab hold of them. That is your ticket to the future. That is the basis upon which you build a sound foundation. Once you're educated, you come back to the island of Nevis. Come back to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis and make a meaningful contribution to the development of this federation. And that is my simple encouragement to you as young men and young women. Don't let them do that. Some of them don't got it, you know. Some of them don't got Because they have, you know, Somebody talk about grudge and envy before. I don't want to talk about that, but because they have, they have no interest in you. They are lawyers, they are doctors, they are this, they are that, and they're discouraging you from going abroad to seek an education. I say, block out the noise, grab it. We want engineers at Nevlek. We want engineers in our water department. We want engineers all up and down this island. Bright minds, brilliant people. I want you to go and grab an education. I sometimes say I wish I was 21 again. Man, I would have gone to Morocco. I would have been so glad to be in Morocco. Come back here. Or go to Indonesia and come back here and talk. What is the language? I don't remember the language I speak there. But come back here and speak the language of Indonesia. What do I speak? I don't know. But anyway, whatever it is. You would be multilingual when you come back to Nevis. That is the bottom line. And that could be a plus for you and a plus for the island. So ladies and gentlemen, my message is clear. I didn't come to spend a long time because Eric, I'm going to say it again, no stay so long next time. But I want to say to you tonight, I want to say to you tonight that we have three intelligent, strong will, dedicated, Persons who have put themselves forward to represent the island of Nevis in the federal cabinet. We have the Honorable Mark Brantley Nevis 9, the leader of the island of Nevis, leader of this great party, and one who have had the experience in the federal parliament and federal government. His exploits are clear to see all of those things that I mentioned about education. He has been a champion of that, and he has been a champion at the federal level in terms of ensuring that St. Kitts Nevis become one of the most sought after countries in the world in terms of our passport and the pride and the strength of that passport. Many people are seeking to acquire St. Kitts Nevis passport. The Honorable Mark Bradley have done an excellent job. When people have performed and they have something to show for their performance, when they have done that, you need to reward someone for working hard and to bring in back something of substance to the island of Nevis. That's why I'm saying vote for a leader. Make sure that when the votes are counted, the Honorable Mark Brantley is the next representative for Nevis 9. And I say next, but I can say the continuing representative of Nevis 9. He's running against a gentleman, a chap there. And all I've said to you, it is very simple when I speak about him. Don't have much to say. But there are a lot to say. But I don't have much. All I'm going to tell you, the Honorable Mark Brantley is running against a gentleman who has failed at everything. He has failed in the ice cream business. He has failed in chicken business. He has failed as a permanent secretary. He has failed at CFBC. He has failed at everything that he has done. The only thing that he hasn't failed at yet is failure. And his failure would come on June 5th. So he would even fail at failure. That is done. I move on to Nevis 10. Eric is running against someone, and I've said before, I don't have a thing to say about any candidate from Gingerland. Until a certain persons are certain persons who are full of chat, and carry back that until they come. I have nothing to say other than to say this. CCM come with it. Other than to say this, that Eric Evelyn has certainly demonstrated, not only in government, but in his social life, in his public life, 
and know also in government that he has demonstrated that he has the acumen. He has what it takes to represent and he has done so over the years in all area and all facets of life. So give him the chance and I'm going to tick that off for Eric. Eric, I want you to come to St. James and St. John, not St. John's, St. Thomas to help me. Because your job would be done by 12 o'clock. 12 noon that is, not 12 midnight, 12 noon on the 5th. Now in St. James and St. Thomas's, Nevis 11. My simple message as the time is running out on me tonight is to say to you that I have come. I have put my record before you night after night. And of course, even if I don't speak about my exploits here on the platform, day after day, you see me at work. Day after day, week after week, month after month, years after years, you have seen me at work. And I've worked diligently. I've worked in a manner to suggest to you that all I've done has, it has, or have people at front and center of what I've done. I've done a great job in housing. I've grown a great job in infrastructural development. I've done a great job in training. All up and down Navis have done an up, absolutely good Alexis job. Jeffers. And I'm proud to Alexis speak Jeffers. about that. And big up Alexis Jeffers. And Coffee says so. And I agree with her. Big up Alexis Jeffers. You know how you can big me up in Nevis 11? Big up Alexis Jeffers. Vote for me. Give me an overwhelming victory come June 5th so that we'll turn a new page in that constituency. Bring in and usher in, sorry, a new era. Bring in a new form of representation that is all people centered. People will matter most in that constituency moving forward. Blessings and we'll rid ourselves of all of the Alexis negativity and all of the foolishness of the past. I am so happy that I was here this evening for a very short time, but that's okay. Tomorrow night is another night. I want to say in parting, the CCM party has demonstrated to you, the people of Nevis, that it is the only party that must be considered in this upcoming election. We have said to you, we want to keep the momentum. We started a rolling out of 2017 after those local elections. The momentum has been great. The momentum has been sincere. The momentum has been there for you to see. We want to keep that momentum going into June 5th. And after June 5th, June 6th, we'll have a wonderful celebration. And then we'll start that or continue that momentum into Bastia. All of you can come with us. Come and celebrate in Bastia. But the work was just about started at that time. We are ready for the work. We are ready for the task at hand. We are going to keep the momentum going forward in this island. Keep the momentum going forward in this federation. Keep the momentum going in this beautiful country. And all of us will prosper as a result. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my quarter for tonight. Very short, but I enjoy the time here. Thank you for listening and God bless you always. Thank you. We're gonna keep the momentum going, ladies and gentlemen. If you're on the live, we want you to stay focused. If you're listening on Van Radio, hope you're having a good time. If you're watching us on YouTube, you know, I've been there looking at the Facebook Live and I'm being reminded that I need to say good night to some people. One young lady tell me she have a birthday, so bigger up. Um, Teresa Brown, better known as Muff. Have a good night. Big up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's getting to that late hour, and I know that the leader has a lot of things to say. I believe last night that he said he opening the grip. Well, I want to go find a seat somewhere close, close to the front, so I could see where I go. Maybe I could peep around the paper there, eh? to find out what's gonna happen in the grip. I tell you now, I can't wait all day. I can't wait for this moment because I want to hear what's going on. They say things happened monthly, weekly, 
daily. <coughs> oh my. So, I can't wait. Are you can wait? Okay, and if you're not on the live, tune in now. You understand? Because things supposed to Lego. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we are sending a serious team over to Bastia. You've heard the Honorable Eric Evelyn. You just heard the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. They are definitely the best choice in those constituencies 10 and 11. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome the Honorable Premier of Nevis, your choice for constituency Nevis 9 in the federal election. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, that song is so wonderful. Keep up the momentum. That is what we have been saying. Keep it up, up, up. Keep the momentum. Because we have good momentum, you know. I say, try live up here saying that I come in to open some grip. Why are you all so anxious? That's why I come in with too long hand. Because I am too anxious. No, I never promised you I open the grip tonight. I said I will open the grip. But you are rushing, rushing, rushing to campaign and go out and see grip. <laughs> that now go up. That will never happen. You will never live to see that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. The grip will come. But tonight, the hour has already grown late. And I want to bring the grip in prime time. So come back tomorrow. I am here. I am here. No, listen. Tomorrow when I come, somebody will walk with the grip for me. How's that? Ladies and gentlemen, the hour has grown late. And we are trying our best to get meetings done and wrapped up in a reasonable time. I believe that we ought not to allow ourselves to become distracted. We are and have found ourselves on the home stretch now. We have been nominated. The team has been made ready. We have handed out a fair amount of campaign materials. People are in their homes, in their kitchen, in their bedrooms, wearing blue from head to foot. We're inviting you, the few that can come to our meetings, with permission, of course, of the police, to bring your whistles and bring your horns and make some noise because we want the people who are listening to know that the CCM party is here. And even though we are going virtually, we want you to hear the noise. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I find our opponents to be interesting because Everything we say on the platform, they try to take it and twist it and turn it and try to create something out of it. And that is why the Honorable Eric Evelyn has come here tonight to say that no matter what they try, people know Eric. And I believe that is ultimately what this party relies on. People know us. That is why we're able to stand up in any forum, anywhere in the world, in Charlestown and Bastia, it matters not. We're able to stand and say, before God and man, our hands are clean. When you have lived a life where your hands are not sticky, you have not taken up anything that you did not put down. You have not lived a life where you have tried to take advantage of people. You can say before God and man, my hands are clean. And Alexis Jeffers can say so. He made a point tonight. It is not 
a point that you have to take lightly, you know. Because from time immemorial, whenever you hear about London housing, you hear some allegation of corruption at London housing. Well, I have been privileged to be in cabinet with Alexis Jeffers from 2013, seven years now. And Vance Amory, in his wisdom, put him in charge of London housing. And when I took over as Premier in 2017, such an excellent job he was doing that I kept him at London Housing. And Alexis Jeffers has said then, and he continues to say now, that not a soul can make an allegation about London Housing. You hear anybody talking about London Housing now? Because before God and man, his hands are clean. Look at Eric Evelyn. 32 long years in the civil service, rose to the heights as permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. You ever hear anybody say anything ill of Eric Evelyn? He can stand anywhere in the world and say before God and man, his hands are clean. When Alexis Jeffers came to the cabinet of the Nevis Island administration in 2013, and he proposed that no government minister, no member of cabinet should be able to get any government land. And he got the approval of the cabinet and that has guided us ever since. That is a man who is saying, I want no taint of scandal, no taint of conflict of interest in anything that I have to do with London Housing. Compare that to the man that preceded him, who grabbed London House for every member of his family. In fact, when he done grabbed the London House for every member of his family, he also took $500 to clean one of the house, put on an apron, take up a broom, and sign $500, imagine the minister, imagine the chairman of the very corporation put on a bib, put on an apron, take up a broom, put on some high heel shoe and get $500 and went say here clean house. You ever hear any such thing in the CCM? It can't happen in the CCM. We are made of a different cloth. And that is why I'm not concerned in myself with the efforts to twist words. I have said to my team, listen, we are on the home stretch now. And when you're on the home stretch, you have no time to look back. You have no time to look to the side. You are looking only at the finish line. Let us stay on message. Let us continue to say to the people of Nevis that the Concerned Citizens Movement as part of Team Unity has an impeccable record. <laughs> You know, as I was driving here today, I was thinking about it. And I said last night I spent some time setting out the abysmal record of the NRP as part of the federal government. Not in opposition, you know, as part of the government sitting in cabinet. They have spent 19 years, first with Pam and then with Labour. And you compare those 19 years to our short five years and you realize that there's a new mathematics in the country. People are saying now five more than 19. Because when you compare the five years to the 19, you see the vast difference in terms of performance. You see the vast difference in terms of what we have been able to do for the benefit of the people of Nevis. Now, I pointed out last night that at the height of activity in the SIDF, where our passport money was collected in Bastyr, 
where Sinkitz and Nevis passport money was collected. That for the year 2013, that is the accounts, published accounts for the SIDF, we saw that the people of St. Christopher got over $95 million in grants and donations. One year, $95 million in grants and donations. And Patrice Nisbet and the NRP were at the table when the SIDF collected some $1.2 billion. They decided that no division could be on the board. And of that $1.2 billion, according to the accounts, Nevis got two loans. One for $6 million at the interest rate of 5%, and one for $4,084,000 at the interest rate of 6%. Oh. So while Sinkins got something called grant, G-R-A-N-T, which for those of you who don't understand is the same as F-R-E-E, -E, free money. The people of Nevis has got something called L-O-A-N, loan, that you and I have to pay back. But I said it last night, then I'm going to say it again, we will not pay back a red cent. You know why? It is highway robbery, unfair to the people of Nevis, that we must pay back by the people of Sinkins. You hear what we get? Ten million dollars. Loan. But Sink has got $95 million grant. That is the legacy of NRP and Patrice Nisbet. But while the people of Nevis could only get a loan, and while the people of St. Christopher were getting $95 million in grants and free money, Patrice made sure his psychic Hector get a big advisor position. And he and Hector marched into West Bastyr and got lands over there. Yes, sir. That is what they are about. I have said it, you know, not because I hold any animus in me. I have said it because that is where the evidence leads me. All of self and none of thee. That has been their mantra and the evidence is there to show. It was Patrice Nisbet, as part of the Starsky and Hutch duo, with him and El Hansville Hector, that while Patrice was legal advisor to the NIA, and Hector was chairman and minister of agriculture, chairman of the Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation, is long time they're working together, you know? Because when Hector was Minister of Lands, Chairman of the Corporation, Hector made sure to make his sidekick, Patrice, a director of the Corporation. And the two of them went up there in Bellevue. And the two of them looked on and they said, boy, we could form a law firm, you know, and do all the work up here too. And they formed a law firm called Wally Attorneys. I remember like yesterday. Yes, sir. When from the opposition benches in the Nevis Island Assembly, I uttered the words, Joe, you don't know. So let me tell you. Because the Premier then, the Honorable Joseph Perry, I was convinced then, and I'm convinced now, had no idea as to what was happening up at London Housing. And so I had to tell him that two of the fellas them under you, a minister and your legal advisor, the chairman and member of the board at NHLDC, that together they had formed something called Wally Attorneys and they were milking the cow. Milking, I saw the milk cow, milk the cow. That's what they were doing. So, here was Hector, collecting money as minister, one check. Collecting money again as chairman of the corporation, two check. 
collecting again as all the attorneys doing business for the same corporation. Switch it. Collecting again as clean any high heels, any wig, four check. Here was Patrice, collecting as legal advisor, one check. Collecting as member of the federal parliament, two check. Collecting as member of the board of NHLDC, three check. Collecting as all the attorneys, four check. I never hear he collected as cleaner. And so, that is what you've had. And then you see how the thing works because when Patrice found himself in Bastia after 2010, and Hector lost government in Nevis in 2013, what happened? Patrice hired Hector as his advisor. And Hector snow goes back in the trough again. And then they decide, since we are here, let us get some lands in Bastia. That is what they're about. And I believe the comparison is important. Look at the men and women in CCM. Look at the three candidates that CCM has offered to the people of Nevis. Say what you will about Mark Brantley. Say what you will about Eric Evelyn. Say what you will about Alexis Jeffers, but you can never say that we thief nothing. You can never say that any roof for us coming to agriculture. You can never say that over $400,000 went missing from CFBC. As far as I know, I never attended CFBC. Eric never went to CFBC. And Alexis Jeffers for sure never went to CFBC. So all who went CFBC and thief CFBC money at them we're talking about. We're not talking about the three of us. I went to the Nevis 6 form. Alexis went to the Nevis 6 form. And Eric, why are you so old, me remember you? Eric went to the Nevis 6 form. We never got a thing to do with CFBC. So you all want the grip? The grip will come, man. Tomorrow, Saturday, no? Oh, I want grip Friday night. I am saying to you that the record is clear. That is what NRP's record is. And if a man has shown you who he is, believe him, every chance they have got, they have sought to take advantage for themselves. Not for you. Because when you look at the record, Patrice has been 20 long years, 240 long months, 7,300 long days. And what can he show for that time? He now comes back to the people of number 11 and he says to them, give me another five years to do what? More of nothing? Give Alexis Jeffers the chance. Let him go to Bastia and stand up with me. Stand up with Eric. Stand up for Nevis. That is what we are asking, ladies and gentlemen. Because his record, his character is unblemished. And his record demonstrates that he has an affinity for hard work. Because in this government, when you want something done, you give it to Alexis. And that is why... You look around Nevis, you see all the projects that he has involved himself with. And you recognize that he's a man who gets things done. And that is what you want. Somebody who's not afraid of hard work. But not working for himself, you know. Alexis said to me, he's my friend, he's my brother. And he said to me that nobody will ever accuse him of engaging himself in anything untoward while he's in government. He said nobody will ever say that he took one square inch of government land as Minister of Lands. And so he has said it, so he has done it. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that is the measure of a man. 
That is what you want in leadership. You want people who are genuine, people who are committed, people who will stay the course, not on their own behalf, but on behalf of the people that they serve. Mark Bradley, are you already placing up? Are we around the place, yes? Mark Bradley, are you already placing up? So, let us look briefly at the difference. They were there for the last five years when money was flourishing. And they got from 1.2 billion, two loans. One for 6 million and one for 4 million and 84,000. The one for 4 million and 84,000 went to the craft house. The most money craft house ever seen in its life. And wound up in the hands of a family, they say, for payment of airport lands. The six million was at five percent. The four million and eighty-four thousand was was at six percent. All of these are loans repayable by the people of Nevis. That is what NRP brought when Sinkits and Kittishans were getting ninety-five million free money. The evidence is there. I didn't make it up, you know. Those came from the audited reports of the SIDF. So that is their legacy, their record. Look now at the CCM. I don't need no paper to tell me that since the CCM joined with Team Unity, Nevis now has ambassadors for the first time in our history. CCM Nevis now has people representing the country overseas. Our ambassador to the OAS is from Bath Village. Our High Commissioner to Canada is from Rice's Village. We have our minister councillor from the parish of St. James. We have hired young diplomats, dynamic, knowledgeable, talented, multilingual diplomats from all over Nevis. They're serving in the diplomatic corps. We have a young man from up Hamilton who's serving us in Canada. Distinguished minds, young people being put to work for the benefit of the country. CCM, CCM do that. CCM do that. We have a supervisor of elections who's from Nevis. CCM do that. We have a commissioner of police who's from Nevis. CCM do that. We have a speaker of the National Assembly who's from Nevis. CCM do that. We have a chairman, a chairman of social security who's from Nevis. CCM do that. We have now a representative on the SIDF board from Nevis. CCM do that. We have, we have scholarships galore that have come and divisions now. Young people studying all around the world. CCM do that. CCM with it. We have unprecedented access for the first time to the citizenship by investment funding. And that has allowed us to do certain projects. You've heard of the peer at Wally. CCM do that. CCM come with it. <laughs> You've heard of the hospital expansion, the largest investment in healthcare in the history of our island, which is under construction now. CCM do that. CCM come with it. You have heard of the new generating sets at Nevlek, which has alleviated power problems that we've had in the country. CCM do that. CCM come with it. You have heard, you have heard, ladies and gentlemen, of the new police station at Newcastle to house police and fire to rescue our officers who used to live out there with termites and bats. If the man who supposedly wants to know about termites and bats, let him look at the record of the NRP because NRP in government federally had them there living like that. CCM do that. CCM come with it. <laughs> if you want to look at the new treasury building in town, oh my goodness. When you come to town and you see that magnificent edifice that arose from the ashes of the one that they burned down. Again, CCM do that. If you look, ladies and gentlemen, at the fact that at the Van Samer International Airport we did work on the runway. 
At the tower, we did work there. Over at Long Point, we provided new equipment for NASPA. You look at the CCTV program being deployed across Davis, CCM do that. CCM, go with it. Mm -hmm. You look at the fact, ladies and gentlemen, that for four years in a row, for the first time in our history, in an unprecedented way, we were able to pay a double salary to the hard-working civil servants of Nevis. CCM do that. CCM go with it. Mm -hmm. If you look at the fact that just today, I looked at some statistics which say that crime in Nevis is now at its lowest since 2006. The lowest in 14 years. CCM do that. CCM go with it. If you look at our handling of this COVID-19 pandemic, a pandemic which came out of nowhere and affected every corner of this globe, you look at CNN, you look at BBC, you see the carnage, the carnage that COVID has created in the greatest countries in the world, military and financial superpowers. People are dying, health systems overwhelmed. And here in Little Nevis, Look at how Mark Brantley and the CCM has handled COVID in Nevis. CCM, go with it. Mm -hmm. Look at how our health professionals have handled COVID here in Little Nevis. Look at the wider federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. And look at how we've handled COVID here with the grace of God, the prayers of the multitude, but the hard work of so many. Look at our results on this. And I know people have complained. People have said it was hard to be locked down. But I prefer to be locked down than dead. And the reality is that our efforts save lives. CCM, go with it. CCM, do that. Look at our record, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the unprecedented access that we now have. Look at the role that we have played. Look at the fact that if you are from Butler's or Barnsgut, if you're from Hanley's Road or Ramsbury, that if you've had a US visa, you no longer need to spend thousands of dollars to go to Barbados to renew it because we have now repaired the relationship with the United States sufficiently that they have said that St. Kitts and Nevis must be part of their visa interview waiver process. That means you're not going to spend a penny to go Barbados. CCM do that. CCM go with it. Mm -hmm. Think about the fact that you and I used to have to travel to Trinidad or to Barbados to get a Canadian visa. But the Canadian government has been persuaded by us who lead, who lead our diplomatic effort in this country that they must now come to us and collect our biometrics here, saving our people thousands of dollars, not having to travel to Trinidad or to Barbados <laughs> to access a Canadian visa. CCM, 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 do that. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the poverty alleviation program, the fact that people who are earning less than $3,000 a month who are qualified can access an additional $500 per month that many divisions have benefited from. CCM do that. Look at the fact that the first act that we did as Team Unity was to remove VAT from food, from funeral expenses, from educational supplies. CCM do that. When you look, at the stimulus package that was designed to fight COVID and to bring some relief to our people. Just this afternoon, as I was walking the byways and the highways in the constituency, some people came to me and said they have not yet got their social security check. I picked up the phone, I called, I was told the social security checks. Be not fearful, they are coming. There have been some delays. There have been some delays due to the fact that the numbers that have applied have been overwhelming. But your check is sure and your check is coming. Social Security has stepped up as part of what was arranged 
with CCM sitting at the table federally. I did not go to Bass here to find out what land is available for me. Van Samri did not go there to find out what land was available for him. We went there to fight for the people of Nevis. And so if you got a social security check, CCM do that. If you have received a $500 pop check, CCM do that. CCM go with it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have continued and continued to perform. You see, I stand up here, I don't need any list. I have the memory of an elephant. I can speak and speak and speak because when you have lived it, when you have been a part of it, it becomes a part of your DNA. I can speak to what we have done and what we continue to do for the people of Nevis because that is why we get up at mornings, you know. We get up to serve and to serve with distinction. We are the ones doing that. I have looked and looked and looked at so many ways that we have led. Where else in the world, where else in the world, where else in the Caribbean have ministers sat and said, we're going to give up salary. We're going to allow less money to us each month because we want to show solidarity with our people. I give up my whole salary in Nevis, the premier salary. That salary is more than anything I earn in St. Kitts. I gave it up, not because I can't use it, but because I want the people of Nevis to understand that leaders must lead. And leaders must stand up in good times and bad, but especially in bad times, you must stand up with your people. Alexis Jeffers took a pay cut for the second time as a minister. Poor Alexis, when them fellows say another 10%, I would have said he scratches here, but he has none. So he scratched his head, and he said, another 10? But he said, you know, I agree because the situation with COVID is affecting everybody. And the ministers agreed. Try Liber, nobody vote for try. But try agreed. He could have said, well, I'm not an elected member like the rest of you. I'm getting less money than the rest of you. But he agreed. Hazel Brandy, the same thing. She agreed. Eric Evelyn agreed. And you know, Eric has 52 godchildren to take care of. So it's hard for him to agree. But he agreed. And all of us said that when you're in a position of leadership, you must lead. And that is the example that we have set. But we didn't stop there, you know. We then put our hands in our pockets and we came up with $13,500, $5,000 US dollars per month for three months that we committed to groceries. And I'm here and happy to tell the people out there that this week coming, that is the week that starts on Sunday. We are into the month of June and we will be distributing vouchers again to help families that are most vulnerable. Dare I say it, dare I say it, dare I say it, CCM do that. You see, you see the laundry list that I have spoken to just off the top of my head. I am sure there are people out there who say, Mark, forget this and Mark, forget that. On the Windrush scandal that unfolded, you see who you see on BBC? Me in a bow tie. Sound like I went to Oxford University. In a bow tie, representing not only the people of Nevis and Sinkis, but the people of the region. CCM do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the representation that we've offered the unprecedented exposure of our people to training. You know, I called the Honorable Alexis Jeffers one day. I said, Alexis, there is some training available in Morocco. I want you to find someone. And Alexis sent a young lady who works in his ministry. 
And I saw some photographs from Morocco where that young lady joined counterparts from around the region. And I said, that is why we're here. We are here not for ourselves. We are here to serve others, to expose them, to lift them up, to make them achieve the best that they can be. That is our mission. That is why we are here. That is why we ask people to vote for us. They say all kind of thing about me. They send me up in my pool and sip expensive wine. I mean, say big up Mark Brantley. I... Well, you must big me up because I got pool and expensive wine. Imagine that is what they're talking about on the platform. Say so you must vex with me. Because it seems to me that success now in Nevis is a bad word. That if somebody is successful, and remember I said, before God and man, my hands are clean. So me not thief from nobody to drink little wine. Me not even like wine, you know. But them say me I drink wine, so let us leave it as wine. Me not tea from nobody. But that is what passes as political campaigning on the other side. I will only wish to make bold to say tonight that my home was built in 2004. I entered politics in 2006. And I got into government in 2013. You know why it is important for me to say that? Because I had what I had before I got to politics. I didn't come to politics to see what I could get for me. I came to politics to serve others, not myself. And so if it is that there are some who are trying to get into government at the young age of 60 and are concerned at 60 about pool and wine, then I tell you they are coming for them and not for you. That now go happen. That will never happen. They will never live to see that happen. You must play that clip there again. That now go happen. <laughs> that will never happen. They will never live to see that happen. It can't happen because people understand why they're coming, you know. They say a man is oft condemned from his own lips, you know. If you listen to people long enough, you hear them talk, you know what is going through their mind. The man wants to come into government to get pool and wine. Maybe by the time he come in government, chicken will have four wings. But he wants to be in government for what he can get. So he must understand that the things that he's looking at in a covetous way were not acquired through government. Because I never buy no land from government. I never build no house through land and housing. I never put my daddy name on no paper and then switch it over to me. I went to the bank. I said, I'm a young man with a young wife. And we want to borrow some money to build a home. I meant to big up Mark Brantley. You big up my wife too because she helped pay for it. <laughs> and we did it the right way. We worked hard. And so when people start to come and want to attack you, and say all man of evil against you. They must understand that there is a place in this world for hard work, for honest work. And when people work hard and they achieve through the grace of God, let us not grudge each other. So if the boy want to come up and swim in the pool, let him come. I hope when he finish swim, we got water left. Huh? The water may go missing. That is the concern, you know. Because when I realized that all the anger and all the venom that was being directed at me was because the man said, me drink wine, and the man said, me have pool, it occurred to me that I could invite the man 
Let him enjoy the pool and the view. And so remove from him this feeling of anxiety. I say, but Lord, Spencer don't offer me free water. So what if the water from the pool goes missing? What will I do then? And so I had to pause and determine what I will do next. But ladies and gentlemen, that is what is passing for debate on the other side. They're not coming with any issues, you know. Now let me tell you something. They have gone ahead now and filed some case that they served on me day before yesterday. They said they want the boundaries change. I have no difficulty because I have said whatever boundaries the court gives me, I will fight the election on those boundaries. If they tell me I must go to Booby Island to fight, I will fight on Booby Island. I have no difficulty because those people who know me know that I am the campaigner in chief. And I go out and I campaign and I interact with our people. I am not afraid of people. Because when your hands and your heart are clean, you need not be afraid of meeting and greeting your people. I meant to be a Mark Brantley. And I'm telling you the reception that we have had. I have been walking with Eric. I've been walking with Troy. I've been walking with this and that. I've been walking with Astro. I have been walking by myself. And the reception has been overwhelming. I have a big brown bag. I put it over my shoulder. And wherever I go, I go in the bag and I take out something. I take out a little pamphlet. I take out some literature. I take out a little door hanger. When I go and knock on the door and nobody's home, I leave something. Say, Mark Brantley was here. And the reception that we have had has been overwhelming. Cherry Gardens, Bath Village, Stony Grove, Brown Pasture. It has been overwhelming. People understand genuine people, genuine representation. So they file the case and they say they want to send 3,000 people from St. John's up to Gingerland. And if that is what the court says, then that is what the court says. Eric, you will win even bigger. And I, I will do what I need to do and campaign where I need to campaign. I have said boldly on this platform that if they send me to campaign to the people of St. James, then that is where I will go. If they send me to campaign to the people of Zion, that is where I will go. Because whether you're from St. James or Zion, Brown Hill or Bath, you want good representation and you understand that in Mark Branton you have the best representation. You understand that in the Concerned Citizens Movement you have the very best that Nevis has to offer. And so I am not losing any sleep over that. All who want to go court at the 11th hour and seek to use the court for some strategic advantage, that's a matter for them. I am not involving myself in that but now they're rushing around, saying it's urgent, urgent. They must find a judge. This thing is urgent. And they say, for five years, the case was there. Why now? Why now? But I'm not concerning myself with that. Their partners in St. Kitts, the Labour Party, rushed to court in St. Kitts. You know what they rushed to court to say? And I want people to listen to me carefully. They rushed to court in St. Kitts to say, that the state of emergency is unconstitutional. Because under the state of emergency, the borders are closed. And because the borders are closed, they can't bring in their flights with overseas voters to vote. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I and the CCM party defend the right of all divisions and petitions to vote. We have publicly and privately defended the right of our people to vote. Many of you who are listening, many of you who are viewing, march with us through the hot streets of Charlestown waving placards. We do not march because we have nothing else to do. We march because the CCM defends people. And when the NRP removed people from the voters' list, the whole of Cane Garden, they removed from the voters' list. 
I recall they removed the lady in Bath from the voters list. And when the lady arrived at court in the morning, and the question was asked, why was she removed? And they consulted the piece of paper from the electoral office. They said the woman was deceased. And the woman walked into the courthouse with vim, vigor, and vitality to a step. I said to myself, well, she's either a jumbie or she's alive. And when she walked into the court to give her evidence, and the lawyer for NRP looked on the paper and see that the woman was removed from the voters list because NRP said she was deceased. The lawyer said, my God, like Lazarus, she has arisen. <laughs> we marched against that. I went to court in 2011 in a famous case here, Mark Brantley against Hensley Daniel, the supervisor of election, Joseph Parry, and a set of them. And we won the case on behalf of the people of Nevis who had been disenfranchised. <laughs> and that is why the CCM took the decision that we could not, on principle, agree to disenfranchise any Nevision, any petition, was lawfully on the voters list. So they say now that CCM is depending on the overseas vote. They say we cannot win unless our brothers and sisters come in to vote. But look who gone to court. Is not CCM. They gone to court to say the borders must open. And I say to you, consider that many of our people are in COVID hotspots like New York. I am speaking to them almost on a daily basis. My own siblings are in New York. We are concerned about them because they are brothers and our sisters. They are us. They are our family. And I would never seek to jeopardize the lives of our people for a vote. And none of us in the CCM as a decent party will ever do that. And that is why we have taken the decision as a CCM party, as a party that cares about the people of Nevis, that this is not the time to talk about voters being brought in because it poses a risk to the voter that is coming in, our brothers and sisters that are coming in and it poses a risk to us that are here. We are saying that our people must remain safe, and that the safety, health, security, and lives of our people matter more than any vote that they can cast. And that is the CCM position. We are principled because we believe in the right of our nationals to vote. But we are equally principled in saying that our nationals must not endanger themselves nor endanger others here in the homeland. Because if flights start to come in here and people descend by the thousands, we run the risk of overwhelming the health system if any COVID were to come. Unless people think that this is something that is Fantasy. Just today we learned that St. Vincent and the Grenadines got seven more cases of COVID. Just today, when they were talking about opening up, they were talking about things looking up in the region, St. Vincent and the Grenadines got seven new cases of COVID. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to be vigilant. And having made such good progress, I have spoken to our people overseas, you know. I have called them. They have said to me that they would be ready, willing to do anything for Nevis and for the great CCM party. And even now, many overseas are watching. They are tuned in. But I have spoken to them, and they tell me they understand the position as one of principle, that we in the CCM cannot say we care about them and ask them to risk their lives. We cannot put them on planes with others 
and risk their lives and then risk the possibility of introducing COVID to the people here. We are interested in the lives and livelihoods, the safety and security of all of our people, those at home and those abroad. And so CCM, yet again, is standing on principle. And nobody should have any argument with us over that. They say we can't win without people coming in. Then let us go to the polls next Friday. And let the people of Nevis make the decision as to the party that they feel offers them the better representation for the island of Nevis. Let the people compare our records. 19 years NRP has been in the federal government. 19 years they have sat in Church Street at the table. Five years CCM has had, and look at the difference. You remember I just went through a laundry list, CCM do that. Look at the difference. So we know that on the record, on our achievements, on our vision, our plans, the strength of our representation, on our competence, that the people of Nevis prefer the Concerned Citizens Movement. And on Friday, the 5th of June, that glorious day, the people of 9, the people of 10, and the people of 11 will speak with one voice and say that it is CCM time now for the island of Nevis. That the people of Nevis are saying that the Concerned Citizens Movement is the best team to represent them in Bastia. Keep the momentum. We have no time now to look back. We have no time to look sideways. We will not be distracted. We must keep that momentum to the finish line. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, as I walk around, because I like to talk everything, you know, as I go in the byways and highways and do my campaign and knock on doors, the young people are telling me that money is being offered to them for them to vote. That they're being told to bring their voter ID, particularly our brothers and sisters in the Spanish community. In the non-national community, are being told, bring your ID. And someone from the Dominican Republic said to me that in the Dominican Republic, apparently, you can only vote with your voter's ID. And so, when they want to suppress the vote, they buy the people ID and hold it, and the people can't go to vote. I am saying to the people of Nevis tonight that if you have your ID, vote with your ID. If it's expired, you can go in and they give you one right away. But if your ID is expired or it's lost, do not fret yourself because you can vote with your passport. You can vote with your social security card. You can vote with your driver's license. Any official government ID, you can vote with that too. So all who feel they're buying people ID to keep the people from voting, tell them it now go work. Someone said to me that another strategy is they get the ID. And then they tell them, go and vote. Come get your ID, go and vote. And then come back to NRP headquarters over there in, wherever the name? Nelson Spring. Come over there to collect your money. One young man told me that was the plan. And I told the young man, tell them you want your money up front. And people may say to me, Mr. Brantley, as the Premier of Nevis, you mustn't tell people that. I said, no, because a fool and his money are soon parted. And if NRP are giving money, take the money and vote for the Concerned Citizens Movement. That is all. If it is that they're going around telling people that this is about money and they can pay people, then I'm saying to them, take the money and vote for the Concerned Citizens Movement. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who comes. 
what they're trying and what they're saying. Because you know me, you know. I said I'm the campaign in chief. And you know I got ears long. Like how Pinocchio knows long. I have ears all over the place. And not because I go along sometimes and people say, I don't appear to be paying attention. I assure you that I'm paying attention. I assure you that there are no two ways about it. There's only one way about it. I am paying attention. And so there are people deep inside their camp who when they make the plan, I will get my little WhatsApp. Sometime at two in the morning, the phone goes, boop, 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 boop. WhatsApp, this is what is happening. Because people know that these sanctimonious vagabonds are unfit. They could not even paddle and captain a canoe. Yes, sir. And they're yes, coming sir. to talk about they want to represent the visions. What is the appeal? What do they bring to the table? And the answer is nothing. Look at them. Look at the representative in Gingerland. Nothing. Look at the representative in number nine. Nothing. Look at the representative in number 11. In 20 years, he has brought nothing. And so, I am saying to the good people of Nevis, that on the 5th of June, you have a choice. Because every election is a contest. It's a contest between people, between ideas, between ideologies, between parties, between characters, and between individuals. Look at the Honorable Eric Evelyn. Measure him. Examine him. Look at his life of service. And the only conclusion you can come to is that Eric is the best representative for the people of number 10. Look at the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. A man who had a US passport and took it to the embassy in Barbados. Nobody asked him to do it. We have leaders in this country who have gone to other countries to beg their country for a passport. Alexis had one from America and he gave them back. Alexis said, my lot is with the people of Nevis. My lot is with the people of St. James and St. Thomas's. My lot is to help to build my country and to represent them in the parliament. And he said, here's my passport. Compare that to a man who was only interested in what he could collect here, there, and everywhere, and went to sink it and collect land down there too. Compare that. Selflessness. Service to others. That is what Alexis Jeffers is about. So compare the two over there. One who has had 20 years and done nothing, and a young man in Alexis who's asking for a chance to continue the excellent work that he has done at the local level and to take that to Bastia. And I'm so proud of them both, because even though they're not there yet, they've already started to represent the Federation. Eric Evelyn led our delegation to carry Festa, and they said he was the best ever. He danced his way onto the stage in Trinidad, and into the hearts of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Eric Evelyn and then Alexis Jeffers has time and time again gone out to represent us in matters of agriculture at the national level. Big up Alexis Jeffers and Eric Evelyn. They're ready. They know what it takes to lead and they have the credentials, the competence and the capacity to deliver. And then we come to number nine. I have been your humble servant since 2007, after the tragic death of our brother, the late great Malcolm Gishad. I was thrown in at the deep end, and the people of number nine saw something in me since 2007. We came again in 2010, they gave me an overwhelming mandate. I came back in 2015, and I'm asking you again now in 2020, stick with me, because I offer you a better representative than what the NRP is offering. Stick with me, because I don't need to come and denigrate people and cuss people and call people house negro and termite. Stick with me, 
because I am not covetous. I don't watch what people have and grudge them. Stick with me. I am here to represent people. Mark and so, ladies and gentlemen, Mark ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you that on the fifth day of June, on Friday the fifth day of June, that glorious day that the Lord would have made, I want you to go out in overwhelming numbers and vote for Alexis Jeffers in number 11, Eric Evelyn in number 10, and Mark Anthony Graham Brantley in number 9. Vote for us. Give us the opportunity to represent you. CCM people, wherever you are, let me know. Are you ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good night, and God yeah. bless you. Since 2007, Premier Mark Brantley has been on the campaign trail, election after election, local and federal. On Friday, June 5th, he will face one of the most crucial elections in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis. But before you head to the polls, tune to Von Radio this coming Sunday when he gives an exclusive interview with veteran journalist and broadcaster Everett Webber Herbert of Von Radio. This will be live on Vaughn at 3.30 in the afternoon. Remember, this Sunday, you can't miss this one-on-one. -on -one. My name is Mark Brantley. I'm the leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement Party, and I will be contesting uh, the constituency of number nine, where 